Tonight marks the dawning of a new era of Diamondbacks television coverage. The game by and for the team that all Arizona fans care about. Archie Bradley! Are you kidding me? A team with history as tough. You've seen history tonight, folks. Big time history. And proud. Diamondbacks win! They're the world champion! As the city it represents. Tonight, we bring you the next evolution of D-backs baseball coverage. New rules, faster, more exciting play. Oh, we got it, Corbin Carroll! And the presentation to match. The faces and voices remain familiar. That's the ball game. Do you believe this one? We've been calling the answer backs all season long, and they do it again. A broadcast backed by the power of the Diamondbacks and Major League Baseball. We're not changing history. And a high drive! There it goes! taking history into a new age. Diamondbacks baseball, presented by Major League Baseball, is officially on the air. It's a new stop on the second half road trip, as well as a new beginning for D-backs television. We're in Atlanta, so join us as the D-backs are set to open a three-game series with the Braves. Good afternoon from Truist Park in Atlanta, and welcome to D-backs Baseball, presented by Major League Baseball. Steve Berthume and Luis Gonzalez, happy to be here with you as we celebrate a new era in D-backs TV, powered by the resources of Major League Baseball. Before... Fewer than one million fans could watch the games. Now, more than five and a half million D-backs fans can watch every single game, and you don't have to change a thing. Gonzo, we've increased viewership more than 500%. Oh, what an exciting time for the Arizona Diamondbacks, not only to, for their fans all across the state of Arizona, but for the Major League Baseball fans all across the country to be able to see this young and exciting D-backs team. Yeah, here's what this means for you. The games are now much more widely available. You can watch locally on your TV, or you can now use direct-to-consumer streaming for the first time ever in the D-backs home TV territory, so bye-bye blackouts. If you watch the games on TV, all you have to do is go to the new channel, and you'll find a complete list at dbacks.com. The games through Sunday, just to help with the transition, will be made available for free at mlb.com, dbacks.com, and in the MLB apps. We'll take a quick break from now. We'll preview tonight's pitching matchup when we come back and look at two reasons why the Braves have baseball's best record. This is going to be a tough series. D-backs baseball returns after this, presented by Major League Baseball. It's a new era of Diamondbacks coverage. A broadcast backed by the power of the Diamondbacks. And Major League Baseball. Diamondback Baseball. Present by Major League Baseball. Is officially on the air.
Jumbo Jack from Jack of the Box after the D-backs hit a home run. Back with you from Atlanta, where D-backs baseball is being presented by the expertise and production power of Major League Baseball. Welcome back inside Truist Park. Steven Gonzo back here with you. Set to begin a tough uh, series here against the first place Atlanta Braves. And Gonzo, one thing that has made Atlanta so tough this year is they have two players who are not just having all-star seasons, but record-breaking seasons. Yeah, Ronald Acuna is one of the first guys that we want to highlight here. This guy has been phenomenal in the first half. He can do it all. He can run, he can hit for power, and he's got an incredible arm out there. And there you see his in impact numbers that he's throwing up in the first half. All that, and he's only half way through his season that's remarkable yeah it really is and when you think of his age and he's only getting better now for this Atlanta Braves team yeah it might be the clear front runner at this point for the National League MVP award it's not just Acuna the Braves can slug you silly and they're led by the big first baseman Matt Olson. well for me this is the anchor in the lineup he does it all he's got 30 home runs in the first half of the season and not only that but he's driving in runs so he is that go-to guy in the middle of that order that he gets going on that offense and again a record-setting pace no player in Braves history has had this home run pace that Olsen has had. So it's a tough start here for Zach Davies, who gets the baseball tonight in the opening. Boy, and he's got a tough one. He's got a tough lineup to face. He's going to have to pitch aggressively and stay around that strike zone. You don't want to fall behind against this tough lineup. And Bryce Elder, quite a story. An all-star, seven wins, two losses, an ERA under three. He's having an outstanding season. So... We got to figure something out. How do you deal with Bryce Elder? Well, you talked about Bryce Elder. I don't want to be nice to Bryce Elder. The D-backs <laughs> offense has to get it going against the former All-Star. His first All-Star appearance coming off his worst outing. He allowed seven earned runs before the All-Star break against the Rays in three and a third innings. Well, Gonzo, we know what the problem has been the last couple of weeks. How do you inject some life into this Diamondback offense? Well, you talk about playing like an All-Star. Lourdes Goriel is doing what he is told to do. He has been the only one playing well offensively and defensively since the break. He's got to spread the mojo around in that locker room to get those guys going in the D-backs locker room. Well, when we look for answers, we go to a veteran like Evan Longoria. We'll take a quick break, and Jody Jackson joins us from the field and chats with Longo. This is D-backs Baseball, presented by Major League Baseball.
Tonight here in Atlanta and the Diamondbacks onto their second city in this three city road trip. And the D-backs after getting swept in Toronto, of course, looking to get this road trip heading in the right direction, a winning direction. Jody Jackson with you. Welcome to Truist Park where we get you set for first pitch here tonight. Let's talk pitching first of all. We did get confirmation earlier today that Tori Lovello, he said, you know, Merrill Kelly's trending well, but he is not going to be back on this road trip. He'll be back at home. Meanwhile, Zach Davies gets the start here tonight, one and five on the season, an ERA north of six. He'll be facing the Braves for the first time in a Diamondbacks uniform. Now, talking to pitching coach Brent Strom, and you know that he is always looking for answers when guys are struggling. As for Zach Davies, he's going to throw more of that four-seam fastball here tonight. He throws that about 20% of the time, so look for the usage of that pitch to go up. And the sinker that he relies on so much, he throws it about a third of the time. The sinker to lefties has not been an effective pitch for him. And so Stromy looking for Zach Davies to make that adjustment as part of the game plan. Of course, we'll see how he can match up against this very tough Braves lineup. There's a matchup to look for. Marcelo Zuna, 10 for 26 lifetime against Davies. Now let's talk about the offense because you really can't fault the starting pitching for what we saw happening in Toronto offensively on this trip so far, just batting 188 with runners in scoring position. And that's been some of the trouble with just six runs in the first three games of this trip. Now the problem is not many clutch hits, except for of course, Cattell Marte's bases clearing triple in the ninth inning on Sunday. But that's been the issue. Not enough clutch hits and not enough slug. And during this rough stretch, the one thing guys cannot do is put that extra pressure on themselves. Here's what Evan Longoria had to say. Uh, yeah, probably just keep away from thinking that you have to be that guy. You know, um, you know, like I touched on before, it's like we we've been a group that's kind of one through nine kind of scrapped and clawed and and then you know one guy whether it's you know the three hitter or the eight hitter will get that big hit that we need and so um just just trying to kind of offload some of that pressure from from everybody individually and just um you know getting back to grinding out at bats and um and ultimately somebody will come through and i think you know one, once we do then some of that pressure goes away of, of having to be that guy to kind of carry the team. So that true team effort offensively will power this team. As for Pena Power, Lord of Grill Jr., he was solid in Toronto against his former team. Hopefully he continues that here tonight against the Braves.
in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to D-backs Baseball, presented by Major League Baseball. Steve Berthium, Luis Gonzalez, and Jody Jackson here with you. As the D-backs, in a span of one week, have dropped from leading the National League West down into third place as they search for solutions to an offense that has run into a team-wide slump. And Tor Lavello was telling us earlier today the games in Toronto, Gonzo, full of frustrations, and now they have to do their jobs here in Atlanta. Yeah, and, you know, you're right. There was a lot of frustration. Couldn't get the key hits when they need them. Seemed like every time there was a runner in scoring position, it was uh, with two outs, so they couldn't get that big hit. But this is a new beginning now, and we got the Atlanta Braves here, and we're looking to start with a fresh start here in this series. The D-backs have lost four consecutive games. They've dropped eight of their last ten. And so they begin play today. They were two and a half games behind the Dodgers division lead and a half game back of second place San Francisco. And that's where things stand right now. Let's not forget about the powerful San Diego Padres as well. So this National League West Gonzo was really starting to tighten up. Well, and, and you're right. It shows how quickly things can change. I mean, a three game span, we were tied at the top and then all of a sudden we get swept and now we're in third place. So. These guys can turn it around real quick. They just got to get back on that roll and do like Longoria said. Just do the little things and rely on each other to get back on track. It is very humid here today. It's certainly not 118 degrees, so hang in there back home. But the humidity is a factor here. Three games in Atlanta and then three this weekend. It gets awfully steamy in Cincinnati this time of year. So that's something that Tour the Bello is trying to be mindful of as well. Yeah, a lot of these guys have to be hydrating a lot because of the humidity out here, and it gets pretty warm. Even though they're playing night games and the sun's not out there, they can get a lot of perspiration going, so they got to stay under that air condition as much as they can in that dugout. And so it's Diamondbacks and Braves, first of three from Atlanta. Let's get a look at the Diamondbacks lineup for the opener here tonight. Well, really, the only guy who's really been hot since the All-Star break is Lourdes Goriel. He's hitting 455 on this road trip, looking to kind of spread the love a little bit to some of the other guys in the lineup. Well, the Braves are the National League's best team. They are already a full 30 games over 500. This is a 61 and 31 club. And they hold a 10 game edge on Miami for the National League East lead. They're starting Gonzo to run away from the Marlins, the Phillies and the Mets. Well, these guys click on all cylinders. They've got steady pitching. Not only that, but they got a very potent lineup and they've got multiple guys in that lineup that can hit homers at any time. Yeah, Atlanta is on track to win 107 games this year. That would be a franchise record. They were the only team in the majors this season with 60 wins by the All-Star break. And as you said it, these guys can absolutely, under Brian Snitker, just slug you silly. They just hit more home runs before the All-Star break than any team in Major League history. Well, I think what they do best is they take advantage when they those pitchers fall behind in the count. 2-0, 3-1, those guys are hunting for that fastball, and when they get it, they don't miss it. Well, the Braves, despite the fact they've begun to run away with things in the National League's top spot, did just lose two of three here at home to the White Sox over the weekend, and that snapped a string of 11 consecutive series wins for the Braves. So despite all the uh, accolades we've just mentioned, this is a team that's lost its last two games here at home. And yeah, they were reeling a little bit after that, those two losses there to lose that series against the White Sox. So let's see if we can catch them on a downslide here and come in here and sneak in and out. We're doing some damage against the Atlanta Braves. Well, you're up against three difficult Atlanta starting pitchers, and we begin with this one. Bryce Elder, 24-year-old right-hander who's become quite a story here. In only a matter of months, he has gone from this season's AAA opening day starter to a major league all-star. Yeah, he's really been fantastic, kind of anchored down in that uh, pitching rotation for the Atlanta Braves. You see there are 106 innings. He's got 80 strikeouts, 34. He's usually a guy that goes five plus innings in a game. His last start, though, he got touched up right before the all-star game and was only able to go three and two thirds of an inning. He is a young pitcher with an old school approach, Bryce Elder. He's a sinker slider guy. There's no velocity here. Works that sinker with a ton of movement on it. Both sides of the plate keeps it down and has a very effective slider with some impressive vertical drop. And he's got a pretty good defense behind him. Let's get a look right now at Atlanta defensively. Yeah, defensively for the Atlanta Braves. We're going to highlight the catcher, Sean Murphy, behind the plate. He's allowed 35 stolen bases on the season with only 14 caught stealing. So if the D-backs can get on base, try to take advantage of the catcher. Well, we have uh, Pat Hoberg behind the plate, one of the best balls and strike callers in the business. So Pat Hoberg is the plate umpire tonight, calling balls and strikes. 
Esther Seha, the first base umpire. Crew chief Brian Lenore down at second. And Edward Jimenez is at third. We're set to go. Glad to have you with us here. It's D-backs baseball presented by Major League Baseball, the first of three here from Truist Park in Atlanta. Don't forget, if you're watching the games on television, just go to the new channel. There's a complete list at dbacks.com, and the games through Sunday are available for free at MLB.com, dbacks.com, and in the MLB app. Geraldo Perdomo is set to lead it off, and we're ready to go here from Atlanta, Georgia. That's Elder's fastball. It's a sinker slider approach, as we mentioned, but you don't see much north of 90 miles an hour from this guy. Yeah, he's going to sit between 89 and 91 miles an hour for the most part. But he has shown exceptional command. And everything he throws moves. Perdomo had a good series in Toronto over the weekend. He had three hits and walked three times. And was on base for uh, much of that series against the Blue Jays at Rogers Center. All the way. And I think for this series, I think it's going to be important for these guys, the Arizona Diamondbacks, try to relax a little bit, take some pitches, kind of work the pitcher a little bit, see what they can get out of Elder up there on the mound, see if they can work him up there to get tired a little bit and leave something out over the plate. It almost sends one out toward Acuna, and right here he comes, and he's going to have to hold up and play it on a short hop, and Perdomo has a leadoff hit. Acuna Gonzo got a bit of a late break on that one. Yeah, he really did. It's almost like he didn't get a good read on it. He just saw it go up in the air, wasn't sure on the swing. Yeah. He kind of froze for a half second there, and that usually is an outfielder. When that happens, you got to play it on a hop. Take advantage of every opportunity. So a leadoff single ahead of Cattell Marte. Right on the corner, Elder will live down on those corners all night long. Patel, 282, he's got 15 homers. He's hit in six of his last seven games. We'll see if he can pick up where he left off. He had that basic basis clearing double in the last game of the Toronto series. Yeah, that three run double in the ninth on Sunday. D backs were able to come back and get the tying run up to the plate against the Blue Jays. Perdomo, 11 stolen bases. He's only been caught twice. Elder has an outstanding changeup. That was it right there. And he throws it to both right and left hand batters. This is a guy with a ground ball rate nearly 55%, which ranks him top five among all major league starters. He lives with soft contact and ground balls. Doubled up on that changeup. Marte lays off. Yeah, and I think for him, his key has been to keeping it on the lower half of that strike zone from the belt down on those hitters. Gets that sinker going. Those guys tend to roll over on those pitches. Look out in the Braves dugout. Turned on that sinker. Bryce Elder is out of Decatur, Texas. Fifth round pick by Atlanta. Out of the University of Texas. He's a Longhorn. Selected in the 2020 draft, a fifth rounder. His first full season in the big leagues. And already an all-star. Yeah, I think Cattell Marte broke his bat on that last foul ball. Had to change bats here. They have vacated the third base side of the infield. Riley is way over standing at the shortstop spot. Arcia up the middle. And Cattell hits it to center. Michael Harris the second is out there. And that's the first out. Well, I don't see any wind out there, but it seems like all the outfielders, he broke back a little bit and had to come charging in a little faster to make that play, almost like they think the ball's being hit a lot further. That's just kind of a still, sticky, humid day here. You're right, there's not a lot of wind. Flags are almost dead still out there in right center field. Corbin Carroll now, top five in the National League with that 894 OPS. He's right behind both Acuna and Olsen. If there's three guys that 
Tori Lovello talked to us today Gonzo that have to figure it out and quickly. It's Marte Carroll Walker. They're all batting consecutively here tonight two three and four. Yeah and they're a major part of this team. That's why the success happened in the first half of the season. That's fair. It bounces down the line and Perdomo's on the move. Tony Paris Chica going to wave him around third. Corbin Carroll is into third with the RBI triple. And the Diamondbacks score first. Boy, you couldn't have placed that ball any better right over a chopper over Olsen's head at first base. Bounced over the head of Olsen and up the line. Boy, this was just perfect placement. And the bounce off the little wall there in right field allowed Perdomo to come around from third base. Good start in Atlanta trying to get off the schneid a run is home one out and here is Christian Walker. Christian has been very aggressive early in his counts. No one one now. Well, this is a great opportunity for Christian Walker here man on third less than two outs. All these these free at bats if you can get it up in the air. Infield comes in for Atlanta. Gonzo, what are you seeing from Walker lately already at 0 and 2? Well, I think he's just trying to get that bat head out too much. A lot of ground balls we've seen from him. A lot of double plays, rolling over a lot towards a third baseman. Just got to try to stay to the middle of the field. Use that middle part of the field when he's going well. He'll shoot that ball to right center. Braves with one out will try and cut down this run. Slider missed away. Walker didn't bite. Christian's 257 batting average is the lowest it's been since June 15th. So he's had a tough month here. He went without a hit in the three game series in Toronto. Got the sinker by him and there's two outs. First strikeout for Elder. Well, just a good pitcher's pitch that sinker in that lower outer edge of that strike zone just a tough pitch for Christian Walker to get there. Well this is the guy you highlighted in the open guns though. Here's Lourdes Gurriel Jr. A run home Corbin down there at third with two outs infield is back now for the Braves. Well, this is the part of the game where the Diamondbacks really struggled in Toronto is runner in scoring position with two outs. They weren't able to get any big hits to try to drive those runs in to get those two out hits. Yeah, the first two games especially they had 19 hits in those two games and scored just four runs elder working Guriel inside and it's two balls and no strikes. Tori Lovello called Lourdes Guriel Junior this weekend instant energy and that's something in which they've been desperate need. On this trip so far, chance to pick up a two out RBI right here. Oh, he's trying to move that pitch around that strike zone. Yeah, he will really work that sinker to both corners. That one didn't quite get back there. And now it's three and one with Dominic Canzo and the DH on deck. Lourdes hits it right at the shortstop. Arcia, the All Star, bobbles it. And Guriel is safe. Corbin's home, and it's 2 0 Diamondbacks. Well, they needed a little help there, but they're able to take advantage. Yeah, and you'll see here right out of the box when Guriel hits that ball, he's not running hard out of the box. He's kind of half jogging. Then when he sees him booted, he kicks it into another gear. Barely to, able to beat that out and get that second run. Close at first, but safe, says Nestor Say, huh? That's an E6 on RC and OR big eye for Guriel. And here is Dominic Canzone getting his start at DH today. Dominic struck out in three pinch hit at bats over the weekend against the Blue Jays. Tor Lovello telling us today he'd like to get Dominic a bunch of at bats and see if they can get him rolling, get that first big league hit. Bounces it towards second, and there's Ozzie Albies, and they got the force on Guriel. But a good start here in Atlanta. Perdomo singled. Corbin Carroll bounced a triple up the right field line. An Arcia error has helped out, and it's 2 0 Diamondbacks early.
Robin Carroll at RBI triple. Part of a two-run Diamondback first here at Truist Park in Atlanta. Where the starter tonight for your Diamondbacks is right-hander Zach Davies. One win this season. D-backs have lost his last six starts. Yeah, it's going to be important now. The D-backs have gone out and get, got them two quick runs here in the top half of the first inning. See if he can go out there and shut down this Atlanta Braves offense early. Well, this guy is the igniter, Ronald Acuna Jr., who is leading the National League in runs scored, stolen bases, slugging, and OPS. Acuna just became the first player in history with at least 20 homers, 40 steals, and 50 runs batted in at the All-Star break. He is having an MVP caliber season. Chops it deep to second. Marte, tough play, no chance. Acuna runs too well. Well, here are the Braves. 30 games over 500, leading the NL East by 10 games. Their lineup from their manager, Brian Snicker. Oh, and they like to score some runs. And the guy right in the middle of that batting order, Matt Olson, that first baseman, 30 homers and 77 RBIs, leads the National League in both categories. This guy can hit. And he's batting cleanup tonight. Ozzy Albies, the second baseman, is in there. Number Acuna, 43 stolen bases. He has been caught seven times. And here is Albies, a National League All-Star this year for the third time in his career. See those power numbers. He leads all second basemen in home runs, RBIs, and extra base hits. Acuna bluffs and holds. Carson Kelly in a crouch back there. Boy, almost a good pitch for a strike. Eric Young Sr. coaching at first. Here's Acuna at first. Just a little deke right there. I'm not going anywhere, Carson. I'm going to stay right here. Well, at least for that pitch anyway. Albee slams it deep to right. Corbin Carroll's at the wall, and it's off the bricks. Thomas backing up. Acuna going to stop at third. It's a double for Ozzy Albee's. He is having himself some kind of year. And Davies in immediate trouble. Boy, and this team will respond in a hurry. That 90 mile an hour sinker just stayed up quite a little bit. Enough for Albies just to shoot it in right. Boy, this is dangerous part of their order now. The 3-4-5 coming up. <laughs> Doesn't get a lot easier from here. Austin Riley just back from his second career All-Star game. The call. Change up floats up there inside. Riley still trying to get it going this month. He's hitting under 200 in July. I mean, that's a dangerous change up. He threw, he threw it about belt high middle in. And he's just trying to tie him up inside off the plate. He doesn't want Riley to get extended. He had Riley's up there. He's smelling those two RBIs out there with runners at second and third. Less. Less than two outs. Nobody, nobody out. Let's take a look at tonight's American Family Insurance Home Protection. Gonzo, the Braves can be a problem right from the get-go. Look at their numbers first inning this year. Oh, that is a problem right there. <laughs> I mean, first wow. in every category you can think of. They got some comfortable starting pitchers with some support like that. They're just laughing, joking, have a great time down there. That's what a team does when they're 30 games over 500. They can. Right. One and two on Riley. Just a bit outside for Pat Hoberg. Might be some rust here because of the All-Star break. This is Zach Davies' first appearance since July 9th, which was a week ago Sunday. That was the final game before the All-Star break when he pitched against Pittsburgh. Slammed into left center field, and this will tie the ball game. Three consecutive Atlanta hits. Opens up the first. They can be merciless.
Well, for Zach Davies to be effective, he's got to have the good location. That one's about thigh high on Austin Riley. Most guys in the middle of a major league batting order aren't going to miss that pitch, and he did not for a double and two RBIs. A single and back-to-back -back hard hit doubles open up the Atlanta first, and here is Matt Olson. Olsen leading the National League in both home runs and runs batted in. He is fourth in the league with that 933 OPS. Two two ball game, still no outs in the first. Olsen begins this series with a seven game hitting streak. He has homered twice during that streak, including a grand slam Friday here against the White Sox. His seventh career slam and his second this year. Didn't offer, says Edward Jimenez. And it's 3 0. Sean Murphy, the All Star catcher, on deck. It's one All Star after another with this Atlanta lineup. I'm sure he's got a green light. If he gets something good, he can handle. Most hitters like Olsen, 3 0, they're looking for something up in the strike zone, middle in, something to drive. Didn't like that pitch, so he took it. Now he's sitting 3 and 1. First four have reached for the Braves. Brent Strom out there. Well, we have a moment. Let's get a look at the Diamondbacks tonight defensively. Here's how they line up out there. Well, Geraldo Perdomo at shortstop. He's done a really nice job this season at shortstop. Only two errors on the season. Well, Davies needs to figure something out and quickly. Two runs already in, two on, no outs. Sean Murphy, the catcher, is the hitter. Well, this is the mental part of the game. Your team's gone out. They scored two quick runs for you. They come back out, and offensively, the Atlanta Braves have just responded by scoring two back to tie the game. Now they got first and second. Nobody out. They're just looking for an out right now. Saw the numbers on Murphy, an OPS that's off the charts at 966. 17 homers, already one shy of matching his career high. Two runs home. He's got Riley at second and Olsen at first. Murphy in the final week before the All-Star break homered in three consecutive games. But went without a hit and a pair of starts here over the weekend against the White Sox. Braves lost two of three here at home against Chicago. Only walked Olsen now behind on Murphy two balls and no strikes. Brian Snitker what a job he's done here. Try the cutter, ran too far away. Murphy wouldn't bite. Second, and it's 3 0. Yeah, second consecutive hitter. Now he's gone 3 0 to. Oh, zoom to the DH. Waits on deck. Zach in that last outing against the Pirates a week ago Sunday kept Pittsburgh to three runs on four hits went five and a third and finished with six strikeouts couldn't get much run support for two D backs loss and this is trouble that splits the gap and it gets to the wall Riley is home they will wave Olsen behind him and it's four to two. Three doubles in the first five Atlanta batters. Well, it's going to be a long evening tonight if he keeps, continues to throw that pitch right there at 91. Center cut. He splits the gap out in right center field. A couple RBIs.
Still no outs, four runs home. The designated hitter is Marcelo Zuna. Oh, not the start the Diamondbacks were looking for here in this series so far. Davey staked to a quick two zip lead. Now they trail by two. Strike one to Marcelo Zuna. An OPS that's up nearly 100 points from where he was last year. Tell Marte ranging over to the outfield grass. They get Ozuna. Murphy moves up. And that's the first out. Center fielder is Michael Harris, the second. Who was last season's National League Rookie of the Year. Had a slow start this year, but has really picked up the pace over the last several weeks. His numbers are way up. He's got Murphy at third base, one down. Infield comes in about halfway. Walker, that gets by him. It's another Atlanta run and gets into right. Harris heading for second, and he is out of there. They get the second out, but the Braves get their fifth run. You see that base hit down the first baseline. Corbin Carroll does a nice job surrounding that ball, making a nice firm one hop throw to second base. Ryan Onora wants to make sure Perdomo hung on to the ball. 9 6 on the put out. Two down for Orlando Arcia, another Atlanta All Star this year. Starting shortstop for the National League in the game last week, 290 and seven home runs. Atlanta already with five runs on five hits. These two starters, Gonzo, Davies and Elder, very similar in their styles, their approaches, their velocities. Both guys working down. Rivera with a nice stop at third. Spins and throws, and Walker, the gold glover, has it at first. But the Braves get eight men to the plate. Five come across. Some work to do here in Atlanta. Team 61 and 31, and we're finding out why it's a 5 2 Atlanta lead as we start the second here at Truist Park. A reminder D backs advantage members, you can earn 20 advantage points to redeem for exclusive benefits when you enter the bonus word of the series into the advantage member experiences section of your MLB ballpark app. Today's bonus word is trees. 
Do they still do the freeze here? Is the freeze still in business? I'm told he is. That's always a highlight. Emmanuel Rivera leads off the second against Bryce Hilder. I would imagine at some point the freeze has got to get tired. Because he seems to run awfully fast. He's a track star. I guess he's used to it. Although that suit has got to get hot in this weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a big dry cleaning bill. Where Rivera gets into one, backs up Harrison, center still backing up, and there it goes. Emmanuel Rivera. And the answer backs, answer right back. It's five to three. Oh, just a nice start. Got a sinker up in the strike zone. Rivera does a nice job of staying on that pitch. Second of the season for Emmanuel Rivera, right over the head of Michael Harris, the second. Oh, a mislocation came middle in right at the upper part of that strike zone. Nice job by Rivera staying right to the middle part of the field and just driving it out to center. With Gonzo, that's another guy. If they can get him going again, we'll be back in business. Yeah, there was a period there where he was driving in a lot of runs for the D-backs, and Torrey was forced to almost give him a bunch of starts. Mm. So Jumbo Jack, free Jumbo Jack tomorrow at Jack of the Box for the purchase of a large drink. Make it a 5-3 ball game. Carson Kelly now. Carson had a pair of hits in his start behind the plate in the game on Saturday at Toronto. Back behind there again tonight. That is foul at third. Hey, Burt, when the D-backs hit big, you win big. Score free Jumbo oh, Jack. come on. When the D-backs, after the D-backs hit a home run. Gonzo, Gonzo, Gonzo. I thought with the new network and all the support and production, amazing assistance we get here from Major League Baseball that you would have better timing on the lead. Still a tick too slow for all me. All right, we'll get it. First day, <laughs> first day. <laughs> baby steps, baby steps. Boy, we are really enjoying letting you watch the games here on television. If you're not sure about the channel, go to dbacks.com. The games through Sunday just to help you with a transition will be available for free all over the interweb. MLB.com, dbacks.com, MLB apps. Carson Kelly into left center. A home run and a single. A good start to the second. And now it's Alec Thomas. Don't forget, D-backs games are available with a single team package, direct-to-consumer streaming option. You can get it $19.99 a month or $54.99 for the rest of the year. And you can sign up at MLB.tv or through your MLB app. Carson did a nice job also by staying through that sinker and keeping it right back up the middle. Boy, the way this game has started, this has the potential of being a slugfest right now so far. It's got that summer slugfest kind of humidity going tonight for sure. This is a guy, Elder, as you mentioned, is coming off his worst start of the year, but is having a tremendous season. So he certainly can be gotten to. And so far, the Diamondbacks, three runs on four hits. For the most part, they've done a nice job laying off that changeup. Thomas is that one that likes that ball middle in up if he can get it. That pitch for him that gives him trouble is that ball out and away. That's the four seam fastball at 91. That's pretty close to top end for Bryce Elder. At the knees for a strike and it's two and two. Bounce by Olsen. Albies has it. Nobody's home at first, and Thomas wins the foot race. Elder slow to cover after it got by Olsen, and Albies had nowhere to throw the ball. So the first three have reached in the D-back second. I'm not sure. It almost looked like Elder stopped for a second there, not knowing if Olsen was going to get up. You see him kind of slow down. That's a base hit for Alec Thomas. So how about this answer backs trying to answer right back the Rivera Homer singles by Kelly and Thomas 
A run home, two on, still no outs, and the batter is Geraldo Perdomo. Perdomo led off the game with a single and a run scored. Came home with a Corbin Carroll RBI triple in the first. Carson's at second, Alex at first. Talk to Tori Lavello before the game. What's the one thing you're looking for to get this thing fixed? And he said, more relaxed, controlled at bats. Not anxious, quick at bats, which is what they've been seeing. Perdomo bunts it foul. Yeah, and so far what we've seen is just guys, like you said, taking the more relaxed at bats, seeing a couple more pitches, not being overly aggressive on that first one they see, making them work a little bit. And now starting to get a little bit of traffic out there on the base paths, and this is when the D-backs are at their best, when they get a couple runners on. Especially if they can answer back after that five-run Braves first. Squares up on the 1-1, gets it down. Riley was already in from third. And the runners move up. Bryce Elders, we talked about Gonzo, a new pitcher with an old-school approach. He's a sinker slider guy. Yeah, not a guy that's really going to overpower you here. You see on the stat cast, got that slider, sinker, and that four-seam fastball, and again, the changeup. But if you look at every one of his pitches, that four-seam fastball, he likes to ride it up in the strike zone. Everything else is the middle quadrant down in that strike zone. Stat cast powered by Google Cloud. Base hit from Marte can tie the ball game, and he sends it to right field. It'll get to the wall, and it's 5-5. Could tell Marte with a two-run double, and we're all tied up. Gonzo, where's this been for the last couple of weeks? Well, I tell you, when they came back across the border from Toronto, they got their bats back, and, and here they, they sure are did. in Atlanta now. Well, you pointed out Cattell's bases clearing double in that ninth inning Sunday at Rogers Center. And he's picked up right where he left off. And that'll get Rick Kranitz out to the mound, the pitching coach. I mean, Elder now has given up 11 earned runs in his last four and two-thirds innings. Not a guy you expect to see giving up so many runs, especially being named to his first All-Star team. Don't forget, Diamondbacks baseball being presented to you by Major League Baseball. Fans, you'll now get the highest quality production level thanks to the resources and the expertise of MLB Network. Same familiar names and faces, both in front and behind the cameras. We all stay with you. Diamondbacks games available with a single team package, direct-to-consumer streaming option. It's only $19.99 a month, or you can get the rest of the year for $54.99. Sign up at MLB.tv or through your MLB app if you want to watch on TV. Check dbacks.com for all the channel listings. Corbin Carroll, RBI triple in the first. Five runs on six hits. I'll tell you, so far, everybody's got their hitting shoes on on both sides. It's a good slider down. You don't see Corbin Carroll swing and miss too many of those down and away by that far. He's usually on a bunch of those pitches. Boy, Elder no, almost threw that to the backstop. A slider got away. Corbin singled twice in the opener Friday against the Blue Jays at Rogers Center, but went without a hit both Saturday and Sunday. A base hit can. Get the Diamondbacks the lead right back. Fouled away. Trying to get Corbin Carroll back on track offensively. And Corbin, like a lot of players in this lineup right now, scuffling. He's got the RBI triple so far, but previous 15 games he was hitting only 204. Maybe that change up maybe it's two. just a change of the the weather you put them in a comfort zone over in Toronto playing there in a indoor climate on turf and now you put them back out here in the heat and humidity <laughs> they try to heat up a little bit well, bats have certainly heated up 
Swing and a miss. It rolls away. Murphy's on it. And they throw it away. Marte heads for third. Corbin into second. And they're going to wave Cattell Marte. It gets up the line. Carroll's into third. And the Diamondbacks have the lead. Oh, it turned into a snowball fight for the Braves defense. Corbin Carroll just ended up at third base after a strikeout. Well, that was a weird pitch. Almost, it hit him in the shin guard, and then you see shoot that ball down the line and watch Corbin run. He's going the distance. He's going for speed, and he's in at third. Let's keep it moving here. Here comes Christian Walker, who struck out in the first. They're going to give the error to the catcher, Murphy. So it's a strikeout and a wild pitch that gets Corbin to first. Marte scores. Carroll gets third on the E2. 1-0 on Walker. Infield in again for Atlanta. There's the strike at a 2-1. And, and this is another opportunity for Walker. Once again, man on third with one out. Struck out his last time. A big chance here to try to get that RBI in. Already two errors by the Atlanta defense. Christian slams it to left. 7-5 Diamondbacks. And that's got to make Christian feel good after he went without a hit in three games at Toronto. Well, this is more like the team that we saw in the first half of the season, just creating a bunch of nuisance out there on the field and taking advantage of mistakes, miscues, getting big hits when they need them. There they are. The answer backs have come right back. That snapped a four for 45 slide for Christian Walker. Guriel looks at a strength. Atlanta sent eight men to the plate in the first. Guriel is the eighth man to bat in the D-back second. Already seven runs on seven hits for the Diamondbacks. High fly ball near the line and right is Acuna headed for foul territory and he won't get there. This half of the inning, we've already been out there for 13 minutes, only one out. Against an all star pitcher. And there's activity in the Atlanta bullpen. Alert is fouled that one away. Michael Tonk in the right hander. Elder at 53 pitches, 35 strikes. Oh, just a good sign for the D-backs to already see seven hits up on the board, not even through the second inning. I'm a fan of the seven runs myself. But I'm with you. <laughs> I get your drift. I'm with you. <laughs> not only that, I mean, it, the way things went in Toronto, Gonzo, it would have been very easy to get even more demoralized after that five-run Atlanta first. Mm -hmm. But they have, as they have all year, it seems, answered right back. Trying to keep it going with one out in the second. Bryce Elder at 55 pitches. He's only recorded four outs. And Lourdes making him work. It's now back to back starts for Bryce Elder, allowing seven runs. Diamondbacks, by the way, have now made it 69 consecutive games with an extra base hit. They have matched a franchise record. Set back in 2001. 
Well, I think right now for Elder, just as hitters get in slumps, pitchers sometimes could get in that funk also. Can't figure it out. Well, he got Lourdes to chase the slider. And there are two outs in the second. And now a chance for Dominic Canzo to get that first major league hit. Dom, the start at DH tonight. It'd be nice to see the kid get his first hit. He really played extremely well in Triple A. Had a sensational season for the Aces. Dominic, an eighth round pick by the D backs out of Ohio State in 2019. 16 homers, 71 RBIs, and 71 games at Reno. Well, Torrey wanted to get him a bunch of at bats. He had three pinch hit at bats over the weekend in Toronto, as you always say, one of the hardest jobs there is. It is, especially for a young player like him that's used to playing every single day in Triple A. Double A all the way up, and then you find yourself in the big leagues, and now you're just sitting around, and in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings, you get an opportunity to face somebody throwing 95, 97 miles an hour. 38th pitch in this inning for Elder. And zone bounces it toward Aldi's at second. And the Diamondbacks get nine men to the plate, and they have answered right back with a five run second. Emmanuel Rivera got it started with his second of the year. It's a wild one in Atlanta. 7 5 D backs. We open up this three game set with the Braves D backs lead at seven five as D backs TV tonight begins a brand new era presented by Major League Baseball you can watch on your television locally check D backs.com for a channel listing you can also now use direct to consumer streaming for the first time ever in the D backs home TV territory. We have gone from approximately 900,000 viewers per game to more than five and a half million per game, Gonzo, and nobody out there has to change anything at all. Boy, and they're tuning into this first one. It's been a wild one so far. <laughs> I know. Right? What a debut it's been. Start in left field for Sam Hilliard, the former Colorado Rocky, as the Braves lead off the bottom of the second inning. Boy, I said this in the first, and I'm going to say it here in the second. He needs a shutdown inning to get his offense back in there. Well, this might help here. High hop for Rivera. Got a hustle. Hilliard runs well, and they just did get him at first. Says Nestor Seha down there. Ryan Snitker may want to challenge. Well, he just tied him up there. And tough spin off the ground there, but Rivera does a nice job of getting rid of it. No challenge from Brian Snitker. Boy, good pickup Boy. there also. Christian Walker must do that a dozen times a game. Acuna singled and scored to lead off the Atlanta first. There's a slow curveball from Davies to steal strike one. 
numbers on Acuna are just sensational. Already with 23 home runs and 43 stolen bases so he will likely spend Gonzo the next two months chasing a 40 40 season. And in one sense he's already halfway there. He's on a current pace for roughly 36 and 75. Not bad. Not bad, especially for a leadoff hitter. It's a nice guy to have leading off the game for you. Right. Acuna, an all-star this year for the fourth time in the last five. He is second in the National League in both hits and batting average behind only Miami's Luis Arias. Two two. Just a little bit inside Davies wanted it Pat Hoberg said no. And now it's full. Albies who doubled and scored in the first on deck. Carson able to hang on and Davies gets the strikeout. It's almost like you lull them to sleep throwing all that off speed stuff and then you go right back down there with that sinker down and away. And to your point Gonzo you get a one two three shutdown and inning the entire momentum of everything instantly changes. After Davies had that five run first. But better health has Ozzy Albies back at all star four. Already with 22 home runs he's slugging at a career high pace. Nearly hit one out his first time up. Change up fades away and it's two and oh. Well hit but right at Corbin Carroll who's got it. And tip of the cap to Zach Davies a big time bounce back one two three second Truist Park in Atlanta it's seven five Emmanuel Rivera leads off the third. Inning for the D backs and Emmanuel Rivera got it started. Gonzo, this home run off Bryce Elder is second of the year. Yeah, he put a nice charge and you see the little splash out there in center field. Nice job by Rivera to get the team going once again in that second inning after giving up five runs. They sent nine men to the plate, got five across. They lead at 7 5, and now Rivera, who homer to start the second, leads off the third. Zach Davies the last half inning 12 pitches got 40 total now and this is what Elder didn't want was a fast inning to get him back out there. Exactly what the Diamondbacks needed on the other side of that slider away and it's 2-0. Oh. They've been trying to get Emmanuel Rivera going over his previous 16 games he'd hit just 145 the base hits have been hard to come by. 
One thing about this, Gonzo, they were not going to go through a six-month baseball season and not have a downturn at some point. It just wasn't going to happen. No team ever does that. Yeah, there's, there's not a lot of teams that have that perfect season. You're going to go through your slumps, ups, and downs. And the only problem with the Diamondbacks was it seemed like right out of the gates, the first three games, it seemed like everybody, yeah. except for Gurriel, was the only one. But everybody else forgot their bats. Torrey was telling us today it's a case of his hitters all trying to do everything all the time right away. Everybody wants to shoulder the responsibility for the offensive downturn, and that's when things tend to spiral. 3-2. And again, Rivera gets aboard to lead off the inning. First walk issued by Elder. And Carson Kelly's bat starting to make some noise now. Carson singled and scored in that five run second. Hey. You could see the D backs taking a lot more pitches than they were in Toronto already. Got to be more patient than see, that. See a different approach, right? No doubt. Carson skies it out to short right center, and Harris drifting in. Well, Carson's played a lot recently. We talked with Torrey in his office today. He's trying to give Gabby Moreno a little bit of a downturn here. Let him catch his breath a little bit. And Torrey told us Moreno's going to find himself in the middle of everything here moving forward, so they'll get into a more of a rhythm with him. But they just wanted to kind of pull back on him just a bit. He played an awful lot the first two months of the year. Alec Thomas now. Alec Singleton scored in that second inning. Yeah, he's one of those guys who got that infield hit, hit that ball to the right side. As the Albies made a nice play, but you talked about the need for patience a moment ago, Gon. So if there's something that's not quite clicked with Alec, it might be patience at the plate. Since he's been back from Reno, he has walked only once in 67 plate appearances. And I think for him, the hard part is getting command of that strike zone. You know, when he came back, hit one of his problems for the last few years in the minor leagues, he was really successful at hitting the ball, but. His feet start getting happy. He gets those happy feet where they're moving around a little bit. He's almost like falling away from home plate. So it makes it tough to get those pitches down and away. Well, he's been patient certainly in this at bat. There's a 3-0 strike. But Alex, since he came back to the Diamondbacks in the middle of June, after a month in the minors, is hitting over 300. And activity continues in the Atlanta bullpen. Sliders to strike, and now it's full three and two. Michael Tonk and the right-hander still warming up for the Braves. Perdomo on deck. I mean, that's the pitch he can handle, that one up and away. It's the one down and away that gives him the problems. Why is that? Because he's falling away. You could see that ball up. He just throws his hands at it when it's down in the strike zone. Makes it harder for him to get to. Again on three and two. Alec gets rung up with a sinker right there. Fourth strikeout for Elder. He was ahead three and oh and struck out looking. Boy, and this is just a pitcher's pitch right here. It just comes right back over the inside part of the plate. Well, with Elder already at 76 pitches, 49 strikes. Keep in mind he had that extremely long second inning. Brian Snicker will tell him to call it a day. And we'll be back after this.
Bryce Elder, a first-time All-Star, will not survive the third inning here at Gonzo. Brian Stitcher going over things with him. He's had a rough couple of starts now, despite that All-Star appearance. Yeah, just a tough time out there on the mound. It just seems like uh, right before the All-Star break, he lost it, and then uh, first start back after the break. It's good for the Diamondbacks, though. It worked out well. Sure did. D-backs got him for two of the second, or two of the first five of the second. And here is Michael Tonkin in the third. This guy's quite a story. Six-foot-seven-inch right-hander. Prior to this year, he had not pitched at a major league game since 2017 with the Minnesota Twins. He has been in the minors. He's played Japanese ball. He's played independent ball. He's played in the Mexican League. And he found his way back to the major leagues for the first time since 2017. And here he is with the Braves, his 23rd appearance of the year. And he gives a definition of a true grinder in the minors to get back to that major league level. Former 30th round pick by Minnesota at a high school in Palmdale, California. Michael Tonkin. Perdomo sends one out to right toward Acuna. Acuna is at the track and he leaps up to snag that one. And that's the final out of the third. We're in Atlanta, Truist Park. It's 7 5, D Bay. Mayhem moment, and he won a pitcher to keep your eye on in the Diamondback minor league system. It's the lefty from Taiwan, Yu Min Lin, who was outstanding in his first start at the double-A level, pitching for the Amarillo Sod Poodles. You saw the numbers there on Sunday. Yu Min Lin, one of the top prospects in the Diamondback system. I got to keep an eye out for him. As Austin Riley leads off the Atlanta third against Zach Davies. Riley had a two-run double in the first. Diamondbacks, if you're just joining us, led 2-0 after a half inning. Atlanta answered with five in the home half. And then the Diamondbacks got five of their own. Right back in the top of the second. And now they lead at 7-5. And Zach Davies has set down five in a row. One out for Matt Olson. See if Davies can get some momentum going here, Gonzo. Well, his team's taking care of the part of coming right back and getting some runs for him. Well, it's a matter of him just settling in and getting in that comfort zone and attacking some of these hitters. He's got three ground ball outs and a strikeout in his last five. Being very careful with Olsen. Olsen's an odd duck in that he's third in the league in strikeouts, but he's sixth in walks. And so that with all the home runs he hits makes him the Real true three true outcome guy. It's usually a homer, a walker, a strikeout. He's on his way to a second base on balls tonight with Murphy on deck behind him. And there it is. Two plate appearances and two walks for Olsen. And a one out base runner for Murphy. Well, I think this is where Davies gets in trouble where he gives away those free passes. 
It looked like he wanted no part of Olsen there. No. I'm sure your manager, your pitching coach, even the guys on the field, if you're going to get beat, you want to get beat by those guys hitting the ball around the ballpark. You don't want to give those free passes out there. Murphy, a two run double in that five run Atlanta first. Murphy in his last 34 games since the middle of May is batting 320. And already one for one tonight. John Murphy acquired from the Oakland days in December. Part of a three team deal that also involved the Brewers Atlanta as part of that trade sent catcher William Contreras to Milwaukee. They brought Murphy here and right away gave him a long term extension six years seventy three million dollars and to this point he's been worth every penny. He sure has he kind of stabilized that stabilized that catching position. He's one of the best there is. Sean Murphy. And the Walt Bra Weiss the bench coach on the left there. And the Braves have always been known for their good pitching and as of late they've signed some young guys that can provide some pop in that lineup. They have spent some money for sure. They never really talk about those catchers in the last few years. They've tried to lock up some good ones here and Murphy's come over and like you said has done a fantastic job for him. Zach Davies 50 pitches 26 strikes. He's given up five runs on five hits. That is going to slice into the seats and out of play. Well, the Braves off to this tremendous start despite some major injuries in their rotation. That's where Bryce Elder has really helped them out. Both Max Fried and Kyle Wright have been out not to mention the loss of Ian Anderson who had Tommy John surgery. Fried is coming back from a left forearm strain. He's already made a couple of minor league rehab starts right with shoulder trouble won't be back for at least another month. Deep to center Alec Thomas to the track Alec to the wall and he's got it Alec Thomas holds it in. Tip of the cap for Alec Thomas and a loud out number two in the third. Boy, and he hit this ball well but you'll see Thomas he gets a nice read on it he's starting to read making that run out towards the fence you see him take a peek see where he's at. Feels for the wall makes a nice running catch to jump out there in right center field. Boy Gonzo you're right never any panic under control the whole time knew exactly where he was he is a tremendous defensive center fielder. Marcelo Zuna the DH. Just goes down as a long out in the book. Ozuna grounded out his first time. He's been finding the going slow as of late two for his last 21 up there Marcelo Zuna lazy fly very short right Marte out there near the line and he's got it in fair territory another zero on the board for Zach Davies who has a 7 5 lead through three and up next Cattel Marte Corbin Carroll and Christian Walker Diamondbacks baseball presented by Major League Baseball.
It's baseball. Tonight's quick stats brought to you by Bounty. Gonzo, we talked earlier about how Tori Lovello talked to us that his concern here with this offensive downturn was Marte, Carroll Walker, the Diamondbacks 2, 3, and 4 hitters. And here you see these are season numbers now, how much they have meant to this offense. Well, there's no doubt about it. When those guys are swinging well, the team produces and gets those wins. And when they're in a funk, like we saw in Toronto, it makes it very difficult for them to win games. So they're a very important part to that puzzle for the Diamondbacks offense. And they were all bad here in the fourth against Tuck and Marte leads it off. Cattell has a two run double. Carroll has an RBI triple. He scored twice. And Christian Walker has an RBI hit. So, so far, so good for the two, three, and four batters here in Atlanta. Where the D-backs have a 7-5 lead. Marte hits it right to shortstop for Arcia. And a nice scoop at first by Olsen. There's a new left fielder in the game for Atlanta. As Kevin Pilar has come in to replace Sam Hilliard. So we'll try and get an explanation on that if we can. So Pilar in left, Hilliard out. One away now, here's Corbin. Corbin had an RBI triple in the first. And then wound up at third base in the second inning after a strikeout and a wild pitch. It was a throwing error by the catcher, Murphy. All part of that five-run D-back second. Not often that you strike out and wind up at third base. Well, there's only a few guys that are able to hustle down that line and get around the base paths, especially on a throwing error from a catcher. Good slider there from Tonkin. It's two and one. Well, that slider looked like a frisbee coming in. It started way out over the outside part of the plate Good. and just ran under his hands. A lot of horizontal movement on that pitch. Fastball up and away. Now three and one. Walker on deck. Tonkin on in relief of Bryce Elder, who winches two and two third tonight. Diamondbacks got him for seven runs on seven hits. Harrison center is there. And let's go down to Jody Jackson. Jody. Uh, guys, Christian Walker coming up. It was great to see him get that hit. Drove in a run. I asked him about in Toronto and that frustration. One After one ground ball, he ran through first base and was just kind of staring out into the outfield. He said he was just trying to keep his sanity, regroup before heading back out onto the field. And he said it's one thing if we're winning during this stretch, but it was very difficult for him to see those three losses and not be effective. But the off day was great for him. Mental break. He's got some friends and family here. And obviously, guys, that first hit will be big for his confidence. I hope it gets him turned around. Yeah, he was stuck in a four for 45 there, Gonzo. And I know, Bert, you and I stayed after in the box after game one, and he was in the dugout like 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes after the game. Everybody had cleared the stands. He put some distance on this one out to right field and Acuna. That one's going to go over his head and gone. Christian Walker the other way. It is 19th of the year, and it's 8-5 to D-backs. His second RBI hit tonight, and things are looking awfully sunnier than they did in Toronto, Canada. Boy, he's been working hard to get that swing back, and this is when he's at his best. I think he's driving that ball to right center field, right field. He just stayed on that sinker and rode it all the way out to right field. You said the other day that that's something you wanted to see him do more of. There's no doubt. I mean, with his power, he has the power to leave to all fields. And I think sometimes as a power hitter, you try to you start trying to pull the ball and yank the ball. And for him, when he is going well, he shoots one or two down to right center field and then he gets right back in the groove. The energy level has returned to that dugout. Guriel. I see a lot more smiles Gonzo than we saw in Canada. And why not? Eight runs on eight hits. They have homered twice. Rivera in the second and Walker in the fourth. Well, this is the team we're used to seeing. It's the team we've seen for. Most of the last four months. In one week they drop from the National League West lead down to third place but they're looking to course correct here tonight first to three against a red hot Braves club. Yeah I'd be curious to ask tomorrow to Tory after 
seeing his team go down after they scored two in the top of the first and the Braves come back with a five spot if anything was said before the start of that second inning that kind of point yeah. you know, splash some water in everybody's face to get them going or something because there had to be a sense after that Atlanta first of oh here we go again yeah no doubt but they answered back as they have so often immediately Ariel spins one Olsen well off the bag it's a foot race and Olsen wins it and that's the end of the top of the fourth but the Diamondbacks get one more Christian Walker an RBI single in the second boy have they missed his bat and now an opposite field home run in the fourth in Atlanta it's eight to five defense. Celebrate summer with us at Chase Field. It's Kids Free Weekend. One of the highlights of our calendar presented by Wendy's and Arizona's family. This is a tremendous opportunity for you families. Kids 15 and younger can get a free ticket to the upcoming Diamondbacks and Mariners games. All three games, July 28th, 29th, and 30th. Don't forget, 29th is Star Wars night. 30th is Baxter's birthday. Get up to two free kids tickets with each adult ticket. DBAX.com slash kids free for all the info as Julio Rodriguez and the Seattle Mariners come to town kids free weekend all three games coming up July 28 29 and 30 at Chase Field here at Truist Park in Atlanta Michael Harris the second who had an RBI single in the first leads off the fourth again Zach Davies it hangs up there right center and Corbin Carroll is there and there's one away. Boy, Gonzo, that hung up there for a long time. Boy, it did, and it's one of those in-between type balls where you got two fast runners out there in the outfield, and you're kind of looking at each other. Who wants it? You take it. I got it. And there you see Corbin Carroll taking control. Yeah, Alex just kind of peeled off there at the last moment. We don't need anybody running into each other. Yeah, and a lot of times with big crowds like there is here today, although you're playing outdoors, it's hard to hear the communication between outfielders. You try to use a lot of your eye movements when you're looking at a guy and you can kind of sense who's going for that ball more than the other guy like Alec Thomas did he peeled off and Corbin Carroll was able to make that play. Hey. Zach Davies since that five run Atlanta first has settled down nicely he's not given up a hit since the Harris RBI single in that first inning. Arcia grounded out to end that Braves first. Two balls and one strike on the Atlanta shortstop. An all-star for the first time this year. Boy, who is this guy pitching from that first inning? It has been night and day for Zach tonight, no doubt. They did a costume change down there after the first. I've seen guys do that before too. have a bad first couple innings and go in there and do a full change and come right back out. He's only walked two and they both seem to be pitch arounds against Matt Olson. 
He has bounced back wonderfully since that five run first. Full count on Arcia three and two. It's hard up the middle for a base hit. And a wild base runner for Kevin Pillar. We, we talked about location earlier. This is where he's got to keep that that middle part of that strike zone. He's got to keep the ball out of there because when you're only throwing like between 80 to 91 miles an hour, a team like this will feast on those balls thigh high. You got to keep it either up high or down low in the strike zone. First at bat tonight for Kevin Pillar, who replaced Sam Hilliard in left field at the top half of this fourth inning. Pillar now 34, his first year with the Braves, signed a minor league deal in January and has been primarily a reserve. He's made just 25 starts at the outfield this year. Pilar's playing time since the middle of May has been anything but consistent. Just 34 at bats in his last 23 games. But Brian Snitker had to get him in there for some reason in the fourth. Not sure if anything happened to Hilliard. This is lifted to deep right center field, headed toward the wall, and it's off the wall. They will wave Arcia. The throw from Marte is just offline. It bounces away from Carson Davies backing up, but Pilar has the RBI double, and it's eight to six. Boy, a nice relay there to get that ball to Marte. That throw just a little bit up the line. You see Carson Kelly there trying to. Nice job by Thomas to get to it, get it to Marte, and then once again, the throw to the plate just a little bit up the line. Not enough for Carson Kelly to make that catch and try to get back and make the tag. It's the fourth inning. The two teams have combined for 14 runs on 15 hits. Acuna chops it to third. Emmanuel Rivera. Two down to the fourth. And now it's Ozzy Albee. They get Acuna with one pitch. And Pilar has to say put it second base. Albies has doubled, scored, and lined out. He's one for two. Just off the corner. That's the four seam fastball that Jody Jackson told us of the pregame show that Davies would feature more of tonight. Something that he's cooked up along with Brent Strom, the pitching coach. Try the cutter upstairs, and now he's behind two balls and no strikes. Another four seamer missed. 3 0. Austin Riley on deck. Boy, oh, took a cut at that sinker. Carson hung on. Boy, and you see that location there right on that outer edge. That's where he's got to try to keep those pitches. That ball just kind of ran out. You see that strike zone box hits on that line away. Kevin Pilar is at second with two outs. 3 1 right here. Ooh. Oh, Pat Hoberg said no. Even Albies isn't sure. That looked like a pretty good pitch. Third walk issued by Davies. Pat Hoberg, one of the best there is at balls and strikes. Boy, said you, ball four. Boy, you couldn't have put that pitch at a better location right there for Zach Davies. I think Albies even thought he got locked up on that. I think you're right. So a single, a double, and a base on balls in this inning. A run is in. Two on, two out. Austin Riley.
And while well, Carson Kelly gets a word in with Zach Davies trying to slow down this Atlanta momentum, let's check in with our guys Snoop and Jack of the Bucks. Yo, Jack, that a baked brownie in my munchie meal? You know it, Snoop. Say less. Atlanta with five runs in the first against Zach Davies after he was taken to a quick 2 0 lead. He has held down the Ford ever since, but has hit a few bumps in the road here in this fourth inning. Thing with Atlanta, every you go down that lineup, they've always got that one hitter that's one swing away from making a difference. And it seems like it's every guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's the problem. Jose Ruiz, who did not pitch at Rogers Center over the weekend, is warming up in the bullpen. Davies at 74 pitches, 40 strikes. He has walked three. He's got one strikeout. Atlanta six runs on seven hits. Well, Austin Riley's has got he's got as much power as anybody in the game. Well, Davies ahead on the count one and two. Yeah, and Zach's really found a weakness right there. He's thrown that pitch middle in, just tying him up. Jody was right. The plan was for him to show that four seamer a lot more often than he usually does, and he has done that tonight. Riley wouldn't chase, and now it's two and two. Well, you'll watch here Carson Kelly with a man on second base. You'll see. Carson give the location and then he'll set up right down the middle of the plate and just as Zach Davies is throwing the pitch you'll watch Carson move either in or out where he wants that pitch being thrown. That's Three. so the guy at second base can't give the location. Here it is to Riley. Runners on the move. Riley slams it deep to left field. Guriel will watch it go. Well, as you said, Gonzo, everyone on this club is only one swing away. Well, he was getting them on that pitch middle in, and you watch this one, it was stayed low and down the center part of the plate. Watch Carson, he sets up down, and there it is, down in the lower part of that plate at 79 miles an hour. 17th of the year for Riley. And that's going to be the last pitch that Zach Davies will throw tonight. He will not survive the fourth. And now leaves trailing 9 to 8. Back after this.
Atlanta. The cell phone lights are out. It's a wild one here, a slugfest in the opener, first of three tonight, D-backs and the Braves. Back and forth we go, both starters gone early. And here is the right-hander, Jose Ruiz, 35 appearances, 31 with the D-backs after he was picked up from the White Sox earlier this year. Jose has not worked since July 9th against the Pirates. We did not see him at Rogers Center over the weekend. He'll face Matt Olson, who has walked twice. Atlanta with five in the first, now four in the fourth, and they lead it nine to eight. Boy, and Olsen up to that pitch there. He had seen nine, eight balls and one strikes, and he was trying to ambush him on that first pitch. Among major league hitters, only the Angels, Shohei Otani has more home runs than Matt Olsen. And only Texas's Adolis Garcia has driven in more runs. He has been a one man wrecking crew. At the center of this Atlanta offense. Everybody talks about. Acuna Junior being the MVP this guy could very well be taking votes from him also. Leading the league in both homers and RBIs he's fourth at OPS. Olsen an all star this year for the second time in his career the first time with the Braves. Went to his first All-Star game two years ago with Oakland before his trade after that year here to Atlanta. Ground ball at first base. Walker calls off Ruiz. Atlanta has answered a four-run fourth. They take a 9-8 lead. Buckle up. It's a wild one in the deep south. Brand new era, Gonzo, in D-backs TV, presented by Major League Baseball. The power, the production, the expertise of Major League Baseball supporting D-backs TV. We have gone over five and a half million viewers in one night, and boy, I don't think we can cover it so far with all the offense that we've seen. Boy, it's been a crazy one. I mean, seven runs total in the first inning. Everybody, the offense is clicking tonight. The bullpens are going to be very active the rest of this ball game. It's been a crazy game. Hot and humid and the ball is flying. The D.H. Dominic Canzone 0 for 2 leads off the fifth. Both starters Bryce Elder and Zach Davies are done for the night. Atlanta leads 9 to 8. Each team has had eight hits so far. Dominic still looking for that first major league hit. That one rolls foul. They like the matchup with Dominic against Bryce Elder. Elder got it a ground out twice. So we'll see how he does now. Dominic can zone down the line. Just missed his first career hit. 
Got a slider and hooked it just a tad foul. Boy, and it's one and two. Boy, and that's got to have that heart racing right there. He just missed it. He's done that a couple times. He did that against the Blue Jays, jumped on a couple pitches. We just got to slow everything down and just see it a tenth of a second longer just to try to shoot that ball to right center field. Dominic Can's own, 25 years old. He'll be 26 next month. He's put together three productive seasons in the D-backs minor league system, having a big year this year in Reno. And Tonkin gets the foul tip. Murphy hangs on. And there's one away in the fifth. Big matchups continue all season long. Come on down and visit us at Chase Field. Got some tremendous teams coming in here as the pennant race heats up. Use our air conditioning too. Cardinals, Dodgers, Padres, Cubs and Astros all coming to town. So cool off with us and enjoy some D-backs baseball. Get your tickets at dbacks.com. Terrific night for Emmanuel Rivera. And a long home run out to Dent Center his first time up and walked in the third. The home run is second of the year. On the ground right to the shortstop Arcia. Two out. Well, you know, if you're the Diamondbacks, that scouting report, the Braves bullpen, or the, they've given up the second fewest walks in the majors, only 105. So those guys throw the ball effectively around the plate. And they've had to really ham and egg it with part of that bullpen. They've had some key injuries back there. And the reserves have done a nice job. Carson singled and scored in that second inning, one for two. Hope you're enjoying our D backs broadcast. Produced by Major League Baseball. Don't forget, streaming options available, $19.99 per month. $54.99 for the rest of the year. Sign up at MLB.tv or through the MLB app. And talking works a one, two, three, fifth. Back from Truist Park right after this. Here's what our association with the Major League Baseball means for you. It's quite simple. D-backs games are now much more widely available. You can watch locally on your TV, just as you've done. Check dbacks.com for a channel listing. Or you can now use direct-to-consumer streaming for the first time ever in the D-backs home TV territory. That means bye-bye blackouts and good riddance. The games through Sunday, just to help with our transition, available for free at MLB.com, DBACS.com, and in the MLB apps. You can buy a DBACS single team package, a direct to consumer streaming option, stream the games anywhere you go. $19.99 a month, $54.99 for the rest of the year. You can sign up at MLB.tv or through your MLB app. DBACS Baseball, produced by Major League Baseball. Sean Murphy. A two run double in the first leads off the fifth against Jose Ruiz. Oh, 
about the way you want to start off this inning here with three balls and no strikes. Speaking of the walks I think you have to go back Gonzo to that non strike three call on Ozzy Albies just before the Riley three run homer that really came back to bite Zach Davies. He had struck Albies out it was a borderline pitch but it looked like a strike. Yeah it looked like a really good pitch didn't get the call Riley stepped up and belted a three run homer into the bullpen and here we are nine to eight Murphy aboard to start the fifth and the batter is the D.H. Marcelo Zuna. Zuna's offensive pace is slowed. He's stuck in a two for 22 right now. And has struck out in close to half those at bats. He's grounded out and popped out so far tonight. Ruiz having trouble throwing strikes. Yeah, hadn't thrown one yet in this half of the inning. Six balls in a row. And hangs up in right center field. Corbin Carroll is under it. And that's the first out in the fifth. Suit up this season at MLBShop.com. You can check out the largest selection of authentic caps, T-shirts, collectibles, and more. Gear up with your Arizona Diamondbacks at MLBShop.com. Michael Harris, the second to center fielder. Well, really, Osuna. Gave us a break there after throwing six in a row. He's swinging a pitch in the inner half part of the plate, almost a ball. He can be a frustrating player at times. If he's on your side, Marcelo Zuna, certainly productive, but somewhat frustrating. If I can recall, I think he got taken out of the game at our place at Chase Field for thinking he hit a ball off as a homer and didn't <laughs> run. Got yeah, a that, long single. That doesn't carry with Brian Snitker very well. He's done an incredible job here. Been in the organization maybe since they were the Boston Braves. Probably not that long. Short left, Guriel. Two outs. Orlando RC, the shortstop, singled and scored in the bottom of the fourth. Trickles foul at third. Arcee has spent parts of six seasons in Milwaukee. Kind of fell out of favor as their shortstop solution. And was dealt to the Braves where he was pretty much a super utility guy. Then this spring after Dansby Swanson left for the Cubs, Arcee was given a three-year extension. They plugged him in at shortstop and he was an all-star this year. So Swanson has been such a part of this Braves identity the last several years and in one sense they haven't skipped a beat. Got to figure something out here. Yeah, this is where the 18 pitches, only seven strikes. Yeah, this is the part of the lineup that you really need to try to get out. You can't fall behind on these guys. He's trying to overthrow that ball. You see him kind of yanking it over towards the left hander's batter's box. There it is again. Yeah, I mean, he's missing and missing badly. Curveball really sailed on him. It's three and one with Pilar on deck. Pilar had an RBI double in his first at bat tonight. Yeah, it's almost like Ruiz is trying to overthrow. Every pitch, breaking balls and fastballs. Fouls off a hard sinker. Now it's full three and two. Nine runs, eight hits for Atlanta. Eight runs, eight hits for the D-backs. Braves have committed two errors, both leading to Diamondback runs. Murphy on the move. Garcia. Gets a hold of this one and drives it out of here to left center field. Oh, the Braves, they can slug you to death, and it's 11 to 8.
A leadoff walk and a two out homer. You get that 97 mile an hour fastball on a 3 2 count. She does a nice job of just barreling that ball up and shoots it out to left center field. Pilar now checked in for Sam Hilliard in left field in the fourth inning. His first season in Atlanta. Spent last year with the Dodgers. Seven seasons in Toronto. We saw him with the Giants back in 2019. The Red Sox, the Rockies, the Mets. He has bounced around Kevin Pillar. Four hundred twenty one feet on the Arcia Homer. Well this team's going to score some runs. We knew that coming in the Atlanta Braves are their offense from top to bottom. They're on track to win hundred seven games this year that would be a franchise record. Line to left Guriel fighting the lights and a nice job by Lurtis there to catch that one. And then the fifth but a two out homer by Orlando Arcia the all star shortstop makes it 11 to 8 Braves. Diamondbacks baseball is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Score a free Jumbo Jack from Jack in the Box after the D-backs hit a home run. High humidity, high scores in Atlanta, Truist Park, just north of downtown. Orlando Arcia, a home run is eighth of the year, has made it 11 to 8 Braves. Alec Thomas, the number nine man, leads off the Diamondbacks sixth inning. They had a 2 nothing lead after the top of the first. Atlanta countered right away against Zach Davies with a five run first. They led it 5 to 2. But the Diamondbacks answered right back, a five run top of the second. Back and forth we go. And it's been that way ever since. D backs got a run in the fourth on a Christian Walker homer. Atlanta came back with four in the bottom half. They've added two more in the fifth. And now Tori Lovello's club trails it 11 to 8. Tonkin who came on to get the final out of the third in relief for Bryce Elder who got knocked around. Back out there to start this sixth inning. So far he's given up only one hit to Walker Homer Christian's 19th of the year. Here comes Tory. He wants to talk to Pat Hoberg. Pat Hoberg's going to confer with his fellow umpires here. Now, a play like this around home plate is not subject to review. You cannot look at this. They're trying to figure out what, if anything, it hit. 
In fact, to the point where Pat Hoberg wants to see the ball if there's a mark on it. Yeah, that ball sounded like it bounced, but it not sure, sure if he got a piece of it. The foul ball. They're calling it a foul ball. Nice job there, Gonzo, by Pat Hoberg to just stop, take a look at the ball, get together with everybody, and make the right call. And that's what they did. So Thomas still alive, down 0 2. Pat Hoberg is a really good umpire. Well, he is. He's gotten a lot of high ratings also. Mm -hmm. Thomas down the line and hooked it foul. Oh. Got to pay attention down there. That ball got the bat boy on the. Fortunately, he's got a helmet on. Yes. Hope he's okay. Alec punches it into left. A base hit starts the sixth inning. He nice, it does a nice job of battling in that AB and gets that pitch on the outer half. He finds it in the hole between short and third. Well, a chance as the lineup turns over for Geraldo Perdomo. Perdomo singled and scored to lead off the game. First pitch swinging. Tornabello trying to get away from that. RC is under it. Rory told us before the game today he's seen too many anxious quick at bats. He wants more relaxed more controlled at bats. Everybody's trying to do everything all the time right now and you got to kind of pull back a bit. Marte had a two run double in the second he's one for three. So Cattell has now hit safely in seven of his last eight games. And that three run double Sunday at Rogers Center and a two run double here tonight. And that's a pitch when Cartel's going extremely well, swinging the bat well. He hits that one a long ways. A slider and turned on it. And a nice body block there by the ball dude. Yeah, he gets a nice round of applause there by the fans. And he got down on his knees and recovered nicely after taking one in the helmet earlier. He wasn't going to let that one get by him. No, he didn't. Brindley would have been proud. No such thing as a bad block. <laughs> Austin Adams with Mike Fetters in the D-back bullpen. Bullpen busy as well for the Atlanta Braves. That's the right-hander Ben Heller. Marte tries to dunk one down that line and it's fair. It bounces toward Acuna. Thomas headed for third. He'll stop there. It's another double for Cattell Marte. And the Diamondbacks with one out of the sixth. That runners at second and third for Corbin Carroll. When Acuna had a little bit of trouble getting that ball up out there in that right field. And you see it just shoot down that line. It goes in that little crevice over there in right field. And Cunha kind of kicked it around, but Thomas was already being held up coming around third. No chance for Corbin now. He had an RBI triple in the first. Got to third base on a strikeout and a wild pitch in the second. It's a little tapper at Olsen. Thomas coming home. Carroll safe. Nobody's home at first. And the run comes in. It's 11 to 9, and Martez in at third. Olsen fielded the ball, turned around, and there was no one to throw it to. And really, no play for Olsen. There's no chance he's going to beat Carroll. That's an infield hit, an RBI for Corbin. Thomas scores. 
And look at Ke uh, Corbin Carroll get up that line. Brian Snicker will make a pitching change. He'll go back to his bullpen now. What a game it's been. 11 to 9 back from Atlanta in just a moment. Tonight came in the fourth inning. Christian Walker, after an RBI single in the second, goes opposite field for his 19th of the year. Walker so far tonight, two for three. He's knocked in two runs and a chance to continue doing some damage right here against the new pitcher for the Braves, the right-hander Ben Heller, former Yankee product. Brought up by the Braves in the middle of last month, his 12th appearance this year. He's done well at 2-6-1 ERA. Marte is at third base. Carroll's at first. The run is in. One away. And Heller almost threw that to the backstop. With Christian, another chance right here to get that RBI. Got to stay away from that ground ball. Chance to turn a double play. Got to get it up in the air, get it out there in the outfield. Matt Hoberg, a little low. Cutter missed its two balls and no strikes. Kristen Walker in his last dozen games, stuck in a four for 44, hitless in Toronto this weekend. But so far, two for three with two runs batted in. That one was in the zone, a sinker that time. It's two and one. No sign of a stolen base attempt yet from Corbin Carroll. Well, he's He's trying to get a read over there. Him and McKay, first base coach. See if he can get a little bit more and try to get him into scoring position. 26 steals for Corbin. Trails only Acuna in the National League. He's been caught three times. We've seen Ruiz with Oakland, who leads the American League. Acuna tops in the National League. Wander Franco, Bobby Wood Jr. in the AL. Carroll in the National League. Corbin still holding. Walker. Gets it in the air. Deep left center. Christian Walker has homered again. He is back, and so are the Diamondbacks. And remarkably, they've taken a 12 to 11 lead. What a night in Atlanta. Four for 44 coming in. He has singled and homered twice. And the answer backs have answered back one more time. Boy, just a nice job. Gets that fastball middle end. Stays right through that baseball to left center field. Bert, we talked about it. When he stays to that middle part of the field, he's dangerous. He looks like a completely different hitter than the guy we've seen the last couple of weeks. Busted out big time. Guriel off the mound, up the middle, backhanded by Albies. Long throw. And a nice play by Olsen to keep that foot on the bag for the second out. Kristen Walker home runs numbers 19 and 20 on the year. 
Now up over 60 RBIs, his seventh career multi home run game. And a big smile on the face of Christian. Way to go. Man, who would have thought offensively the way they were swinging the bat in Toronto coming over here to Atlanta? It's amazing, isn't it? Dominic Canzone. Dom, the DH, trying to get that first big league hit. 0 for 3 so far. Got fooled on that changeup, and it's 0 and 2. D backs with two in the first, five in the second, one on the Walker homer in the fourth, four in this sixth inning, including another Walker home run. Rivera has homered. Walker's homered twice. Carroll has tripled. Marte has hit two doubles. And this is the team that for three games could not buy a base hit in Toronto. They have out hit Atlanta 12 to 9. I'd like to see Canzone pick up his first major league hit. It's the night for it for sure. Popped it up. Very shallow left. Pilar coming in. And that ends the sixth. But Kristen Walker with a bounce back performance so far tonight. An RBI single in the second. Then this opposite field home run in the fourth. And then this 3-1 free three run shot in the sixth inning. It's a lot of Walker and a wild one for the Diamondbacks. Remarkable night here in Atlanta for Diamondbacks offense that has scuffled badly the last two weeks or so. They have scored a dozen runs through six innings. And now Austin Adams is on to work the bottom of the sixth against this powerful Atlanta Braves lineup. Austin 18 appearances had a rough time in his previous outing. That was Friday against the Blue Jays when Toronto put up a five run seventh against him at Rogers Center. Well, we need a good inning from Austin Adams here. Shoot, the D-backs tonight have scored more runs tonight so far with 12 than they scored the entire series in Toronto. That was nine. All right away, Austin Adams gets a test. It's Acuna, who singled and scored to lead it off for the Braves. He has struck out, grounded out, one for three. I guess he's uh, taking the first pitch. <laughs> it's a strike. <laughs> Acuna less than pleased that he'll use his timeout. Let's watch uh, what happened here. I think he's pointing out to the timer, which is underneath the center field scoreboard. But in any case, it's 0-1.
Oh, this is like a heavyweight fight right now early it's, in the ball game. Everybody is, keeps throwing the punches. I'll tell you what, this is Hagler Hearns right here. <laughs> and it's going to go a lot more than three rounds. When you think about how good Atlanta's been this season, this is the most runs that they've given up in a game all year. Line the other way. Corbin Carroll again will watch this one bounce off the bricks. Acuna puts on the brakes. Coming around first. Corbin Carroll did a nice job to hold that to a long single. Acuna was halfway to second. Boy, and this is what makes Corbin Carroll so good. And I don't know if you guys remember the first inning of this ball game. When Acuna or, or uh, Alzi Albies hit that ball over yeah. his head in right field and it carried him past him because he charged too far up to the wall. This time he laid back and he played that carom perfectly to make a nice throw to second base. I mean, watch Acuna take the turn at first, thinking double, and then it's uh, Roadrunner and the uh, Wiley Coyote stop there. And we'll go back to first ahead of Albies. There goes Acuna. That hit something down there, a shin guard off Carson Kelly, and Acuna is in at second base. So he gets second anyway. That's a stolen base for Acuna, his league leading 44. Mm -hmm. Well, it hit off the foot of Pat Hobart. Yeah, and I think Carson was trying to get that quick catch and release. Ends up airmail, airballing it. Albies has doubled, walked, and scored twice. Carson wants a word, as does Brent Strom. Remember the rough inning that Austin Adams had the other night in Toronto. Hope you're enjoying our first ever D-backs Major League Baseball television production, a new era for D-backs TV. You can watch locally on your television. You can also now use direct-to-consumer streaming for the first time ever in the D-backs home TV territory. It's bye-bye blackouts, no more. Single games, a single team package is available. Direct-to-consumer streaming option, $19.99 a month, $54.99 for the rest of the year. Sign up at MLB.tv or through your MLB app. Heck, this game alone's worth it already. <laughs> I mean, you have got your money's worth right away. All games, by the way, are free through Sunday just to help all the D-backs fans get used to this transition as the Diamondbacks partner up with Major League Baseball. All the resources of it. MLB and MLB Network at our disposal now. As Albies grounds out, Acuna's at third. Keep your eye here on Geraldo Perdomo lurking in the background. What was that all about? He might have been telling them to just go after the hitter. Don't worry about the guy at second. Riley homered his last time up. He's also doubled. He's knocked in five runs. A two-run double in the first, a three-run homer in the fourth. And that was the final batter that Zach Davies faced today. We have seen Ruiz, and now it's Adams to start the sixth. And he's got him twice on that slider, throwing it up and away. See if we can get him to chase one more time. That used to be Riley's kryptonite when he first came up. That slider down and away. He would swing and miss almost every time. And that one got too much of the plate. There's Adams is a different character. You'll see him talking to himself out there on the mound sometimes. He is a thousand percent adrenaline, Austin Adams. He's got that bubble gum in a headlock. <laughs> Boy, he's got to throw that slider middle away. That pitch in. Riley's strong enough. He can get jammed and just loop something out there in that outfield to get that run in. He want to stay off the plate. Infield starting to creep in a bit here with two strikes on Riley.
I love watching this guy when he comes in because he's cool and calm when you see him around the hotel or walking around the ballpark. And then oh, yeah, he's got glasses on. He's reading a book on the plane. And he comes <laughs> out here and he turns into Brian Bosworth. Oh, two. Oh, boy, Riley's having himself a night, but thankfully that one hooked foul a slider from Austin Adam. Yeah, we talk about location. This is not where you want to throw this pitch with two strikes. He got him to chase two sliders middle away. And look at this one, center cut right there at 89. Got to keep that one further out in that strike zone. Let's see if Carson Kelly's going to set up out there. Well, that's going to bring at least one run home and maybe two. Seven RBIs tonight for Austin Riley. And now Atlanta takes the lead right back. He has doubled Homer twice and knocked in seven. And it's only the sixth inning. Boy, and he left it thigh high for a power hitter. He gets his arms extended. Bird, I played in a lot of games. This is one of the craziest games I've seen so far. <laughs> it is hot. It is sticky. It is humid. It is gross. And the ball is flying at Truist Park. And if you're in those bullpens, you're clipping the lines on that telephone there. You don't want to come into this one. That's right. Just get them. Let the machine get it. Olsen has walked twice and grounded out. This is, that was Riley's sixth career multi-homer game in his second this year. Yes, yeah, has got numbers 17 and 18 on the year. Guriel headed toward foul ground. There's not a lot of room over there, but Lourdes has got it in fair territory. And that's out number two. So they retire Olsen. Now it's Sean Murphy. Murphy hit a two-run double in the first. He has flat out and walked. He scored twice today. Atlanta 13 runs on 11 hits. D backs 12 runs on 12 hits. 13 to 12 in the sixth. Joe Jimenez, the right hander. He might be the next victim. Austin Riley, what a night. Yeah, career high, seven RBIs. And like you said, only in the sixth. It's unbelievable. Easy fly to right for Corbin. Atlanta answers. Austin Riley's second tonight makes it 13 to 12 Braves.
Watch Corbin Carroll's face on this play. Keep your eye on Corbin's face. This is a strikeout and a wild pitch, and he winds up on the Murphy throwing error at third base. But watch Corbin's face right here. That is hashtag want, Gonzo. All the way to third. He got to third base on a strikeout. That's Corbin Carroll right there. Go, Corbin, go. I used to look like that running around, but my was I wasn't getting anywhere. <laughs> it's like Fred Flintstone yeah. just running there. Sure. What a night in Atlanta. New pitcher for the Braves. Good luck to him. Joe Jimenez, after six years in Detroit with the Tigers, acquired by Atlanta in the offseason. And he's pitched well his 33rd appearance. Jimenez will face Rivera to start the top of the seventh inning. Well, let's see if the D-backs can respond one more time. Diamondbacks with two in the first, five in the second, one in the fourth, and four in the sixth. They have out hit the Braves 12 to 11, but they trail 13 to 12. Austin Riley has knocked in seven runs. Rivera homered in the second, his second of this year. Good start to the beginning. It's 3 0. Rivera walked in the third. Grounded out in the fifth. One for two. Oh, here we go again. That's right. Gonzo lead off man's aboard. It's been like this all night. And a chance now for Carson Kelly. Rivera aboard for the third time tonight. Carson singled and scored in the second. He's one for three. Another start behind the plate. Troy Lovello told us before the game today, he's trying to get Gabriel Moreno some downtime here. Let him catch his breath a bit after he played so much in April and May. But uh, it's been a lot of Carson lately, but Tor expects it'll be 50-50-ish from this point forward. Well, Jimenez trying to find a way to throw a strike here. He's yet to do that through five pitches. Check your new D-backs channel listing on the team website, dbacks.com. You can watch the games on television. And you don't have to do anything. The games will come to you. Just find the new channel. You'll get a complete list at dbacks.com. Fastball strike after the meeting. One and one on Carson. And he got a pretty good fastball there, middle in. Just tied him up a bit, fouled it straight back. Carson's been another guy, too. He's been shooting that ball to right field a little bit, staying on that fastball a little bit longer, staying in the middle part of the field. Miguel Castro, the right-hander. Tyler Gilbert, the lefty. Carson strikes out on a slider, and there's one away. Oh, it's just a good location on this slider, down and away. Lower edge. Carson cheating in for that heater at 90 plus. Alec Thomas has had a good night. He has singled twice and scored twice, two for three. change for Pat Hober. Thomas doesn't offer. Oh, it looks like Thomas when you're watching him in the batter's box looks like he's gotten further off the plate. I think you're right. He does seem to be pretty far back there. Uh, is that maybe because of pitches like that or they're working uh, him in I'm too much. Not, I'm not sure. I mean it's hard for him to get gauge on where the, the pitches are because he has that kind of that fallback when he's taking his stride. You'll see his upper body and everything kind of lean away from the plate. 
That's the pitch he can hit away that fastball hard away because it stays flat through the zone his bat and they throw him that off speed down and away it's hard for him to get to it. Rivera is at first after the leadoff walk two and two on Alec Thomas. Another fastball in and now it's full with Perdomo on deck. He tried to rush that fastball under his hands. Alec lifts it out toward Pilar. He's on the run. He might not get there, but Pilar is able to track it down. Just shy of the warning track. Rivera was at second base and he scampers. Back to first a big exhale there for Kevin Pillar well, was he kind of took a weird angle towards that ball. The ball started out to his left you see him kind of running to it and then he realized it was hit a little bit better than Ooh. what he thought he made a good adjustment to make the catch. He's been a very good defensive outfielder for a long time in the big leagues. Kevin Pillar adjusting nicely right there at the age of 34 Perdomo in the leadoff spot. Well it's got to be hard for a guy like Pilar. He played so many years out in center field having to switch over to one of the corner spots yep. and he doesn't play hardly at all. I mean the bats have been few and far between. He's been mostly a pinch runner or a late defensive replacement but came on tonight in the fourth inning to replace Sam Hilliard. We still don't know exactly why. Not sure if Hilliard was injured or not. Two and on Perdomo. There's Brian Snicker. His team 61 and 31 30 games over 500. Braves on track to win 107 games. They were the only team in the majors this year with 60 wins by the All Star break. But they lost two of three at home to the White Sox over the weekend here and now they're in a slugfest as we open up this three game set. And it's two and two on Perdomo. Marte, who has doubled twice, would be next. And Holberg won't bite. And it's a full count, three and two. Well, that's almost the same pitch that I think Albies took that was called for a ball that, that Davies opened up didn't that get. Inning. Yeah, and then the next batter, Riley, hit that three run bomb. Here it is on 3 2. Rivera on the move. There he goes. Perdomo hits it out to Acuna. Back it up. Back it up in front of the wall. And he's got just enough room. Truist Park in Atlanta. They've scored 25 runs. of the office of the commissioner of baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Truist Park in Atlanta 
D-backs baseball presented to you by Major League Baseball. Steve Berthium, Luis Gonzalez, Jody Jackson here. And what an opener it's been to this series. Second appearance for Tyler Gilbert now. He recalled from Reno just before the All-Star break and worked three innings in long relief. That was July 8th. And it went over the Pirates. He's out there to start the bottom of the seventh inning against Marcel Ozuna, the Braves DH. Ozuna's 0 for 3. Tyler Gilbert, in his time with Reno this year, has used three different fastball. He's got the sinker, the cutter, and the four seam. And while he was with the Aces, he was throwing a lot of strikes. The velocity was trending up. In the hole, Rivera's in front of Perdomo. Emmanuel Rivera, silky smooth. Let's go down to Jody Jackson. Well, guys, as you know, this has been a battle of the bullpens, that's for sure. Tyler Gilbert, the lefty out there now. Andrew Chafin is not here in Atlanta. He's back in Ohio for the birth of his third child, first boy. So we are wishing Andrew Chafin and his wife Shelby all of the best. The roster move was adding Luis Frias. But, of course, they've got Gilbert, Kyle Nelson, another lefty down in that pen, guys. Another Chafin on the way. Is the world ready? That's my question. <laughs> the, two, the two little girls are just adorable. They, they look they exactly are. like them, but in a great way. If that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> the sheriff's got his own little posse going now. Well, Tyler got the ground ball out against Ozuna. Ahead of Harris 0-2 with Arcia. So home his last time up on deck. Right at Marte. Two ground ball outs for Tyler. Did we do a. I'm trying to remember if we've done a game like this this year when it's been. I mean, it, this is extra nuts, but yeah. I don't recall a slugfest nearly to this degree. I don't either. I mean, there's been innings here and there, but not consistently every inning like it's been tonight. No, there's a lot of crooked numbers up there on that scoreboard. Garcia. Singled and scored in the fourth, hit a two run homer in the fifth off Jose Ruiz. His eighth of the year. I think these are the types of scores that you expect, and you you look at the final score and you look and you think it's at Colorado. <laughs> exactly. And then you realize that it's the Diamondbacks and the Atlanta Braves playing this game. And we got two more to go here this week before it's on to Cincinnati, in the words of Bill Belichick. Rivera once more and boy the tonic for this one has been Tyler Gilbert three silky smooth ground ball outs and can tell Marte who's doubled twice leads off the gate. Every rally. Marte's just such an impressive hitter. Very high contact rate, power line to line. He's also a switch hitter. Can tell Marte. Wherever he is, he is good with the glove. Boy, did that ball just get ripped? He's having quite the night. That ball was a missile. He's got the mojo going tonight. 
Well, he sure does, Governor. Cattell Marte has doubled twice, knocked in two runs, scored twice. He is two for four tonight in this wild opener here at Truist Park in Atlanta. Steve Berthume, Luis Gonzalez, and Jody Jackson with you. Marte will lead off the Diamondback eighth inning against the veteran right-hander. Here he is at the age of 36. He of that terrific split finger pitch. 41 saves back in 2019 with the Padres. It's Kirby Yates now in his second season with Atlanta. Yeah, you're right. That pitch that he gets those hitters out is that split finger. So as a hitter, you want to be a little bit aggressive early, early in the count. You don't want to get to that split finger. Two, three, and fours had a great night, and they're due up in this eighth inning. Marte, Carroll, and Walker have done a lot of the damage tonight. Diamondbacks have out hit the Braves 12 to 11, but they trail it 13 to 12. And has been this way since the first batter of the ball game. And Marte just a little behind that four seam fastball at 94 miles an hour. Now he's got a battle with two strikes. He's going to take his time out. Marte doubled home two runs in the second. Diamondbacks got five in the second after Atlanta had scored five in the first. Doubled and scored again in the sixth. Doesn't chase the fastball up and away, and it's one and two. Here with two strikes, you just got to shorten up a little bit. Got two strike stroke in there. Don't try to get too big. When you say don't get too big, what does that mean exactly? Well, like early in the count, a lot of times you'll see a good fastball and you try to jump all over it. Now you just got to shorten up a little bit with two strikes. You want to put the ball in play, make something happen. You definitely don't want to strike out. Cattell putting up the fight here. That's the split finger pitch from Yates. Cattell has hit safely now in seven of his last eight. Had that three-run double Sunday at the Rogers Center. And has doubled twice tonight. Knocked in two. Chopper. Albies has to charge. And they're able to get the out to start the eighth inning. Check out all our upcoming promos and events at Chase Field later this year at dbacks.com slash promos. A big one Saturday. This is during Kids Free Weekend, by the way. It's July 29th, the Tatooine Habu Globe Star Wars giveaway on Star Wars night. There'll be Star Wars characters. The kids are going to love it. You can get two free kids tickets with a purchase of one adult ticket as part of Kids Free Weekend, all courtesy of Cox. Kids Free Weekend coming up July 28, 29, and 30th. Star Wars night on Saturday the 29th. Here at Tatooine Habu Globe. Corbin Carroll. Corbin has tripled. He's single. He's knocked in two runs and he scored three times. And that got him. He's on board again. And that represents the tying run. Tried to run that four seam fastball in. Just kind of stayed in and run back over the plate. Just kind of grazed Corbin's jersey. And let's see if we can get him on the move. We need to get that runner in scoring position. Christian Walker has regained his hitting stroke. He has an RBI single and a pair of home runs. He's knocked in five runs. The home runs numbers 19 and 20 on the year for Christian. Maybe they hold Corbin there because with Christian Walker at the plate, he's already in scoring position. Walker's three RBI hits tonight have come against three different pitchers. Carroll's on the move. Murphy's throw. Not in time. Oh, no chance. He got a great jump at first base. Number 27 for Corbin. And as soon as that foot lifted up, he was already a couple steps down the down the line. Great momentum going towards second base and the explosion getting to second. That is the tying run. A two and oh count on Christian Walker. 
keep the pressure on. And what that does is tightens up that split finger for Yates. He's going to try to keep it up. You don't want to bounce to get that runner to third base. That was it right there. Remember Corbin was thrown out attempting to steal third at Rogers Center over the weekend. He was getting a pretty big secondary lead right there. And it would be at this point a race between Corbin Carroll and Austin Riley to get to third base first. Riley's pretty far back on that line with Walker at the plate and it's three and one. Guriel's on deck. Boy, he's worked himself in a great hitter's count here with a 3-1 count. You can bet Christians Walker's looking dead red right here for something to drive. He walked Walker after he hit Carroll two on and one down and here comes Guriel. Rick Granitz the pitching coach. Well, Lourdes reached on an error by the shortstop Arcia that helped deliver a run when the Diamondbacks got two in the top of the first. He is hitless so far tonight. After a very solid weekend in Toronto, he had five hits. Carroll is the tying run at second. Walker is the go-ahead run at first. And the D-backs two for six tonight with runners in scoring position. Runs that split finger up and in. 1 0. Oh. So far, Yates has thrown more balls than strikes. Uriel, a 3 10 hitter in the seventh inning or later this year, with 60 knocked in. Boy, Kirby Yates is having trouble, Gonzo, throwing strikes. Yes, he is. I think he's worried too with that split. He doesn't want to throw it down the ground, get those guys to advance into scoring position, so he's being extra cautious, missing his spots. Runners on the move. Throw to third. Safe. Double steal. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Nice job there. Great jump by Corbin Carroll. The hardest part is when you're at first base like a Christian Walker, you constantly watching Carroll at second. Base hit by Guriel gives them the lead right here. He's ahead two and one. Lourdes to third. Coming home is Riley. And they cut down Carroll at the plate. Walker gets into third. Just kind of rolled over on this pitch. A nice play by Raleigh to get him out at home plate. Boy, good thing the D-backs stole second and third a pitch earlier. If not, if not, that's a routine double play. Well, there has never been a better time for Dominic Canzone to finally get that first big league hit. He is the DH tonight and is 0 for 4. Boy, yes, this would be a great opportunity for him to get his first hit. Tying run 90 feet away with two outs. Dominic so far in his big league career 0 for 10. Canzone, right field. That's a base hit, and we're tied. Dominic Canzone's first major league hit makes it 13 apiece in Atlanta. Boy, that's the best feeling in the world right there. Look at that big smile. Oh, he's beaming down there, and why not? Way to go. 
Boy, that's a great feeling. I'm so happy for him and his family. He's worked so hard to get here to the big leagues. He had a tough weekend in Toronto, came up as a pinch hitter three times, struck out all three times. Look at that smile right there. His first major league hit. Welcome to the big leagues, Dominic Canzone. Well, everybody knows he can hit. The only problem is as you keep taking those at bats over oh over oh this over oh that and then it starts mounting up on you and you start doubting yourself but he's a fantastic hitter. There we are MLB authenticating the ball for Dominic. Who has tied it up at 13 and here is Rivera who's had a terrific night he has homered and walked twice. What another run scored in this game 13 apiece in the eighth inning. Go ahead run is down there at second base for Rivera Canzones at first two balls and a strike on Emmanuel Rivera. I don't think Canzones feet have hit the ground. They I probably won't for a while. He's yet. floating right now. He up there should at first. be. He should be. Rivera fires it at Pilar. Did he get it. Yes he did. Kevin wow. Pilar may have just saved the game for Atlanta. He came in in the fourth inning for Sam Hilliard. He's made two terrific catches out there. And the veteran outfielder Kevin Pilar at the age of 34 still getting it done. What a ball game it's been here. We are all even at 13. D-backs baseball presented by Major League Baseball a highest quality production thanks to the resources that Major League Baseball provides the Diamondbacks the expertise of the production staff from MLB and MLB Network. It's D-backs baseball brought to you by Major League Baseball Miguel Castro leads off the eighth inning and here is Kevin Pilar who just made that tremendous diving catch to win the top half of the eighth. Doesn't that always happen? You make a great play, you lead off the inning. How many times have you seen it, Ganza? Pilar had an RBI double in the fourth. Rolls it to shortstop for Perdomo. And let's get down to Jody Jackson. Guys, we just saw that shot of Dominic Canzone, and every single guy came up to him, gave him a high five, a hug. And then it was a very cool moment when the manager, Tori Lavella, went up to him. They shared a hug. And guys, you were in there. We were all in there with Tori before the game. You just had a feeling that he knew given an opportunity here at DH today that he would do something special and he sure did. Well Gonzo we said it as he was coming up to the plate this would be the opportune yep. moment for Dom to get that first knock and boy he came through big time. 
with a two on RBI single in the eighth inning against a veteran MLB reliever to get that tying run home. Look and he's earned that right to be here in the big leagues but I can tell you when you're not getting hits until you get that first one that's when you really feel like you're a big leaguer. I bet. Lacuna we know he's one punches that one down the line and it's in the seats. He'll sleep well tonight especially getting that tying RBI. He may come up in another spot here to get that winner too if we have to. Tori Lovello wanted to get Dominic a, a run of the bats give him a chance to get that first hit. It took five tonight but boy he picked the perfect time. And Castro blows it right by Acuna. And there are two outs in the eight. Boy, just good arm action there on that sinking fastball, 96 miles an hour. Blows it right by Acuna. Ozzy Albies doubled and scored in the first, walked and scored in the fourth. Miguel Castro had that little stretch not long ago, maybe a month ago, where he had a few hiccups. But he has allowed an earned run now only once in his last dozen appearances and had scoreless one two three innings both Saturday and Sunday in Toronto and he has been outstanding as of late two quick outs here and it's 0 and 2 on Olbies. and for him it's just all been all about just attacking that strike zone keeping everything down 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 the veteran right hander Ryan Zell Iglesias in the Atlanta bullpen. Well somebody's going to have to win this thing we're guaranteed 27 runs tonight combined which would tie a season high in any major league game this year. Center field Alec Thomas Miguel Castro outstanding once again we go to the ninth inning and it's all leave it at 13. the field before the Diamondbacks and Padres game coming up Sunday August 13th it's a special event ticket package including field access for the pregame yoga class of the outfield you also get a game ticket and a post event drink sample presented by Michelob Ultra visit dbacks.com slash yoga coming your way Sunday August 13th well, Carson Kelly set to lead off the top of the ninth inning but Jake McCarthy's come out of the on deck circle he will bat for Carson against the new pitcher for Atlanta it's the veteran right hander Rysel Iglesias who missed the first month or so of the season with a right shoulder strain but has been pretty solid since he's come back his 30th appearance 16 saves and 18 opportunities comes in in a tie game at the top of the ninth McCarthy bats for Carson Kelly 
And Jake sends it out the other way. Here comes Pilar again. He won't get to that one. And McCarthy's aboard. Let the chaos begin. There's your go-ahead run. Boy, got a sinker down. Just kind of poked it out into left field. Inside out swing. That is the exact start, Gonzo, you would want for this inning. Jake, 20 stolen bases. He's been caught only three times. Riley creeping in from third as Alec Thomas steps in. Well, that's good. They checked over already once. Pitchers rarely ever use both disengagements in the same plate appearance. Well, Zach Davies didn't get that pitch earlier. Isaiah Iglesias did. It's 0-1. I wasn't sure if he was going to bunt Alec Thomas here to try to get that runner to second base, but he's got a better chance of maybe trying to get him to steal a base. Well, Gonzo, that goes back to your point. Alec shuffling his feet all over there. I thought they were going to try to sack him over to second or give McCarthy a chance to steal. Olsen can't pick it up and rolls into right field. McCarthy heads for third. Alex at second, and the Diamondbacks have something cooking in the ninth. Matt Olsen went to pick it up, and it went right through him. <laughs> he golfed that one. I think that was a five wood. Yeah, unbelievable that he just made contact with that. Oh, Albies was running over to cover the bag. Olsen missed the backhander. He just whiffed. Yeah, that probably had some tough spin on it. He just tried to make the play a little too quick. So it's second and third. Nobody out. Infield in for the Braves. And here is Perdomo. And now Iglesias almost threw that behind the catcher as Murphy's able to collect it for ball one. That's the third Atlanta error tonight. You got to take a, advantage of this miscue, get those runs in. Perdomo's hit a couple deep fly balls to right field. We can use another one right here. The previous two brave errors both led to runs. RC had the error in the first on which a run scored. Murphy had that throwing error in the second. We showed you on the strikeout wild pitch by Corbin Carroll. And now Perdomo sends it to right center, and that'll get to the wall. McCarthy scores. Thomas right behind. Geraldo Perdomo makes it 15 to 13. <laughs> what a game. What a night. Ooh, nice pitch down. Elevates it up in the air to right center field. Nice piece of hitting right there to get that ball into the right center to get that double and bring in those two RBIs. Two thumbs up for Geraldo. First three reach, two have scored in this inning, and here comes one more as Marte rolls it into center. Perdomo will score, and it's 16 to 13. Cattell Marte tacks on one more. Who are these guys? They could not buy a hit for three days in Toronto, and they have 16 runs on 16 hits in less than one game in Atlanta. They have jumped all over Isel Iglesias. Still nobody out. Corbin Carroll is the hitter. Marte's third hit tonight. Cattell has driven in three runs. They have out hit Atlanta 16 to 11. They have a 16 to 13 lead. One in the eighth and three home in this ninth. Atlanta in the home half has the big boys coming up. Riley, Olsen, and Murphy, three, four, and five. The sharp end of the brave stick. 
And it's one and two on Corbin. And still nobody out. Kevin Ginkle set to go in a Diamondback bullpen. I got one for you, Gonzo. The Diamondbacks in their history are 0 and 85 when giving up at least 12 runs in a game. Is that right? They 0 and 85. 0 and 85 all time. They wow. have never won a game in their history when they've given up at least 12 runs. They lead this 16 to 13 in the ninth. Brian Snitker out to the mound, and he'll make a move as Corbin strikes out. Walker will be the hitter. He's homered twice tonight. The Diamondbacks in a wild one at Truist Park back after this. In Atlanta, we've had six lead changes tonight. None more significant than the lead change we've seen here in the ninth inning, 16 to 13. Diamondbacks lead it over the Braves, a season high in runs for a game. And the new pitcher for Atlanta is the son of the Hall of Famer Pudge Rodriguez. This is Derek Rodriguez, acquired by the Braves. Off waivers from the Minnesota Twins back in May, his third appearance of the year. Saw Derek Rodriguez when he pitched for the Giants earlier in his career. Walker is the hitter. He has had a tremendous night. He has an RBI single. He has homered twice. He has walked, stolen a base, scored three runs, and driven in five. Sixteen runs on sixteen hits. A big night for Christian. And all of this after he began the game tonight stuck in a four for 44 slump. Well you could just see now his takes everything he looks more relaxed. Not kind of grinding those at bats out. It's amazing one good A.B. can turn everything around for a hitter. Only thing was he struck out in his first at bat tonight. They haven't been able to get him on since. RBI single in the second. A home run out to right field the other way in the fourth. A three run homer to left center in the sixth. He walked, stole a base, and scored in the eighth. Walker hangs up in center. Harris is there. Marte back to first, and that's out number two. The last time the Diamondbacks scored 16 or more runs in a game, you have to go back to August of 2019 when they hung up an 18 spot on the Washington Nationals.
They are one shy with 16 hits of their season high. They had 17 hits back in April against the Dodgers. And five guys in the lineup with multi hits. Uriel hits it deep to center. Harris in front of the warning track. A run in the eighth. Three in the ninth. They have come back again. 16 to 13 in Atlanta. Perdomo doubles home two more. Bottom nine after this. Defensive changes for the Diamondbacks as the no-fly zone outfield is in there. Jake McCarthy, who hit for Carson Kelly, takes over in right field for Corbin Carroll. Corbin goes over to left in place of Lourdes Gurriel Jr. They hit for Carson, so Gabriel Moreno is behind the plate. And the new pitcher who works the bottom of the ninth inning with his three-run lead is the right-hander Kevin Ginkle. 31 appearances. Kevin last pitched Sunday at Toronto, worked one and two-third against the Blue Jays. Last time Kevin had a save was game 162 of last year in Milwaukee. He got the save in the final game of the year. And he will get the opportunity to put the final whistle on this one in one of the wild ga wildest games we've seen in a long time. But he's going to have to do it against some of the Braves' biggest bats as Riley steps in. He has doubled, homered twice, and knocked in seven runs. And he's got the 3-4-5 in the order. That is the Kevin Ginkle slider in its 0-2. Riley a two-run double in the first, a three-run homer in the fourth, and a two-run home run in the sixth. There's still a lot of people here at this ballpark. Oh, you can't leave. I mean, <laughs> The way things have been going. This is the most runs and the most hits that the Braves have allowed this year. 16 runs on 16 hits. Two and two on Austin Riley. Left-hander Kyle Nelson. And Kevin got ahead right away. Lost the handle on that fastball, and it's a full count on Riley, three and two, with Matt Olson, who leads the league in both home runs and RBIs, on deck behind him. You don't want to give him a free pass. You want to make him earn his way on. Here it is. Foul at third.
Got him. One big out for Kevin Ginkle. Well, he went back to that slider. There you see it down and away. That's the pitch that really used to eat up Austin Riley earlier in his career. Ginkle's got a good one. Olsen has walked twice. He's 0 for 2. Tops in the league with those 30 homers and 77 RBIs. Well, this is a time of the game where you'd like to see him hitting right here with nobody on base, one out, and a three run lead for the Diamondbacks. And Ginkle trying to pump up that four seam fastball up in the strike zone at 97. Couldn't hold up on that belt high heater. One ball and two strikes on Matt Olson. The all star catcher Sean Murphy on deck. Ginkle facing three all stars in a row right here. Riley Olson and Murphy. Murphy had a two run double in the first. He's 0 for 2. Or pardon me, 1 for 3. 2 and 2 on Olsen. Kevin Ginkle got another one. Swing and a miss. And Olsen goes down swinging. They're one out away. Boy, just another pitch. Good location. Slider, backdoor slider to get him on 87 miles an hour on the outer edge. Last man standing for the Braves is Sean Murphy. Diamondbacks have lost four straight, eight of their last ten. They have played a remarkable game on a sweltering night here in Atlanta. And things look bleak after a five run Braves first put them down five to two, but they have answered back time and time again all night long. You think Ginkle's feeling it right now? He's grunting on the mound for 96 97. Can he get the side in the ninth? A strike away from a remarkable win. Oh, and two on Sean Murphy. Swing and a miss. Kevin Ginkle strikes out the side in the ninth. He got Riley, Olsen, and Murphy, three all stars in a row. And the Diamondbacks, who could not buy a hit all weekend long in Toronto, get 16 runs on 16 hits and win a remarkable, remarkable game in Atlanta. Boy, this has been wow. one of the craziest games I've ever seen. And not only that, but this, this was a heavyweight fight. They kept bouncing back and forth, knocking each other down and getting back up. And the D-backs are the ones that stand at the end. Get back to winning the margins. Do the little things right. That was the mantra from Tori Lovello in his office earlier today. The coaches have been preaching. It's the little things that add up to the big things. And Gonzo, all those little things added up to a very, very big win tonight. Well, we talked about Guriel being the only guy swinging the bat. We talked about having him pass to Mojo. He's the only guy in the lineup didn't get a hit tonight. <laughs> right. He passed it to everybody else. And there's Christian Walker. And let's give Christian an enormous amount of credit. He had that 13-game hitting streak that got snapped at the end of June. And in his 12 games after that streak was snapped, he went four for 44. And he hung in there, and he hung in there. And boy, he had himself a game tonight. He singled, he homered twice, he walked, he scored three runs, he stole a base, he drove in five. Boy, he did it all. I saw him in batting practice today, and you could really tell he was locking in, just trying to stay through the baseball. Through the baseball, did a great job. And let's not forget Dominic Canzone, who got his first major league hit. That two-out RBI knock tied it in the eighth inning. Jody Jackson, what a night. 
Yes, an absolute slugfest here. The Diamondbacks come out on top, and I'm here with Geraldo Perdomo. You had that hit that drove in two runs, and when you saw McCarthy and Alec get on base, you're facing Iglesias there. What was going through your mind? Uh, I faced him last time, and he threw me a lot of Shania. So I was looking for fastball, but I was ready for Shania. So he threw me first pitch Shania. I knew he was going to throw me Shania. Uh, the base, first base open. You know, he don't want to throw me like some cookie like right on the middle. So he threw me a slightly second pitch. I said, oh, he coming with change again. So I was ready for it. You were absolutely ready. You led off this game with a single. This team was struggling to get hits. Could you ever have imagined that this game would have turned out like this? Never, never. That's the, one of the best games in MLB is right now so far. If you notice the best right now, is the second one. But I think the best one so far for both teams. Like, you know, Atlanta, they really, really good, and we get back and forth. We never give up, and it is. Like, we won. Thank God. And you went to the All-Star game. Eight of these Braves were there. You had three of your teammates. What's it like to come out on top in game one with this team? I know you guys owe them something from what happened at Chase Field. Like, for us, just like, uh, was like, let's get on base and get some something for here. You know, walk it like big time, two homer. Bay C, Walk, Stolen Bay, amazing game for us. Like, we, we have to take, say thank God for, for this game. Jerry, thanks so much. We're going to talk to Christian. The vest looks good on you. I don't know if you want to pass it over. We're going to wait for Christian Walker right here. He drove in five. As Geraldo mentioned, the two homers after struggling through a rough patch of 4 for 45. Christian, congratulations. What a game. I just asked Jerry if he would have imagined this kind of a slugfest, especially after the trouble scoring runs in Toronto. How about you? Could you have imagined something like this or at least even getting six or seven runs? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, we knew it was in there. It was just a matter of doing what we had to do to make it show up. Um, you know, when the team's grinding, you're looking for a way to like channel some energy, channel some positive vibes and, um, you know, put up some runs early. That's, that's a huge thing. But, you know, to keep scoring and keep answering. Um, yeah, super proud of our guys tonight. Talked to you before the game. You seem to be in a very good place. Tell me a little bit about being able to hit those two homers. I know the night started strikeout single, kind of came along. What was different for you here tonight? Yeah, um, you know, I think I think that single, that RBI single, helped me take a lot of pressure off myself. Um, <laughs> shocker. You ducked. He's, he's, it's going well for you tonight. You missed the cold water. No, it, so the single, you know, got me on the right track. Um, I think helped me take some pressure off myself and. Um, you know, just just really happy to help the team, um, you know, and, and be in a good spot so we can all, you know, score some runs and, and keep the, you know, keep answering when, when they score. And, um, you know, just top to bottom, it was, uh, it, it was a cool game. Before I let you go, keep answering. That's kind of been the trademark all year long. To be able to do that here in this game, it was, it was tough there for a bit. It just looked like they were going to keep going with their offense, and you guys were relentless. Uh, that is something you expect with this team, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, um, you know, that's momentum, in my opinion. That's, you know, when, when a team goes out and scores and you can come right back in and put something on the board, um, you know, it keeps the game closer. It, it, it kind of knocks them on their heels a little bit. I, I think it's... Uh, it's, it's exactly what you want out of the offense. And, you know, like I said, just, just proud of the guys tonight. Great job tonight, Christian. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jody. All right, guys, this has been quite a game, uh, not one that we will forget anytime soon as Christian Walker takes off the jacket. It's a little hot out here. Guys, we'll send it up to you. Thank you, Jody. Thanks to Jerry and Christian. Diamondbacks baseball presented by Major League Baseball. Gonzo, what a debut. They had been 0-85, 0-85 in their history when they gave up at least 12 runs. They came back and got this one 16-13. Unbelievable. What an exciting first game to have on the new network here. So excited to be a part of this, and we get the W tonight. Once again, our final score, D-backs win it 16-13, and we thank you for watching D-backs Baseball, presented by Major League Baseball. For Luis Gonzalez and Jody Jackson, I'm Steve Berthew. Now, stay tuned for D-backs postgame show. It's next.